Hey there, everyone. It's Anthony back with another video here on single and placing. I'm like taking my watch off, getting all comfortable. I've got an Alani new energy drink, Witch's Brew, which is one of their um, Halloween flavors, but they still have them at the supermarket I go to, and it's so good. If you like the caramel apple lollipops, that you can get during Halloween. It's like a liquid version of that with caffeine. So woo! Hi! <laughs> um, yeah, so we're here doing a whipping chat today or this evening. Um, there may be several breaks in this. I don't know how long it'll take me to get through um, to, to complete it because I may have a roommate coming home soon. And if that's the case, we may make or go get some food or something. I've also got a rambunctious Apollo today, but um, we're going to do a whip and chat here and respond to some comments from previous videos. Um, so, so yeah, I, I don't know how long it'll take me to get through all of those. So there may be some stops and starts, all of that stuff. So I'm just pulling up YouTube. Um, so I can get to those comments and we'll dive into them. So I hope you're doing well. I hope things are going good for you. And don't forget to leave in the comments of this video how things are going. Um, so I'm going to go all the way to the oldest ones. Apollo has, um, for Christmas, one of his gifts was this Kong, like a giant Kong that you fill with food. So he has to kind of work for his food. And it keeps him entertained for a little while, but it's loud. It's like a hard plastic. And so he's enjoying that. He may come in and harass me once he's all done. So we'll have to do some pauses here and there. But regardless, we've got two weeks worth of comments to get to. And I'm going to try to get to as many of them as possible. So I guess let's talk a little bit about what I'm using um, as far as accessories and stuff and the kit. So this is Astronomer by Miles Pinkney and Diamond Art Club. This is a 105 by 70 centimeter square drill canvas, 66 colors, and then it came with four ABs. And then I've added some additional special drills here and there as well. So um, we've got that going. Um, as far as my tray, I'm using one of my new Mooney made trays uh, that I got. And I, I forget what the color is for this. I want to say it might be Mardi Gras. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But a newer tray I just got in a week or so ago. I've got my Bella Art de Nicole 3D printed funnel here. I've got my Enablers Outpost pen. This is my go-to pen. It's got the single placer from Diamond Art Club and then a five placer, which is... Um, just a thin metal multi-placer that I snagged off of Amazon at the recommendation of Katie over at Diamonds and Washi. And then the putty that I'm using in here is Mary Mud in the scent flannel. This is what I was using over the weekend, so I may need to re-up this and get a new scent. So if that does happen, obviously you'll be here for all of that. But we're going to see how it does um, as is. So... That's everything. Let's let's dive in. Let's get into it. Um, so as you can see, I've already done some of the the darker blues and stuff here. And so we may finish this. I'm not sure and need to move on to the next section. So that's why I have the camera set up so you can still see the next section should we need to get to it. But regardless, um, our first color here is going to be S and that is 44. We go. Yay. It's been a minute since I've like worked on this kit with intention. I've just been picking at it slowly because I've been working on Borealis from Jaded Gem Shop and that's all done now. So I'm kind of coming back around to this project. So yeah, okie dokie. So let's take a look. Um, Carla. 19822 said in regards to my whip and chat responding to my comments from January 5th thanks to you and your guidance I got this kit oh um that's right so I was working on beyond good and evil from jaded gem shop and iterations crafts while I was doing that whip and chat and um Carla went ahead and ordered that image or purchased that license 
individual license from Hannah and ordered it, which is really cool to see someone else doing uh, Beyond Good and Evil as a custom. That's so awesome. That was definitely a surprise because that kit it was kind of just, you know, one that was, you know, a custom that I did and, and just spoke to me, you know, and I was like, I don't know how popular this would be as a diamond painting, but I'm sure some people would like it. And lo and behold, Carla's got it. So that's awesome. You'll have to share progress photos with me if you want to message me on Instagram or something like that. So thank you so much. Alicia six one Alicia T six one said in regards to my vlog episode ninety one in reference to your inquiry about smaller DMC round drills have you seen any of the premium diamond dots kits that use mini dots not sure how many colors they come in nor the size of them I'm an exclusive square diamond painter it would be great if they made some mini squares yeah I um I'm familiar with those diamond dots I think they come in their master class kits. So I've seen those little micro or mini dots that they're releasing to add more detail to like skin tone and faces and stuff. So those are really cool. I'm curious to try those. Um, I, I'm still on the fence about whether or not I'll get one of those master class kits, maybe someday. But it would be cool if those fit onto a square canvas and you could order like just a la carte drills from Diamond Dots in that smaller size. Um, they have a lot of, at least they used to, at um like Hobby Lobby and Joanne and all that stuff they would have a whole section of like a la carte round drills that you could pick up in a bunch of different colors but they don't use the normal DMC color code they use their own color code system so sometimes it was hard to figure out like what was an actual match um and recently the past couple times I've been into those stores they don't have that display anymore with the you know, individual dots. So I'm not sure if that's something that they discontinued or it just wasn't a big, they weren't big sellers, but it's hard to find those a la carte just um, containers of of drills from Diamond Dots these days. I don't know exactly what's going on there. And I'm not sure if you can even get them on their website either. So I'll have to keep an eye out and see if they ever do release those mini drills a la carte because that would be cool. I'd like to do a square drill canvas with round drills <laughs> someday. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to see how it turn out. So anyway, thank you so much for the comment. Uh, Bella La Luna 1726 said in regards to my whip and chat responding to your comments part six. So AI is the ghost writer of the art world. <laughs> On to better topics. Uh, Chuck Black from Montana, check out his artwork. I just ordered a print of the setting sun. Coyotes on the Prairie from his website. I could only find a few of his things licensed to a cross-stitch website and thought about getting permission to create one, um, that one above as one, but thought better of it and just ordered a print. All this diamond painting has opened me up to search for artists I never ex knew existed, and that is worth every penny I've sent spent on it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think, I mean, I wasn't really even... Uh, I guess, into artwork. Like, I appreciated artwork before I started diamond painting for sure, but I was never personally, like, interested in, like, having a print on my wall or having a, you know, buying a piece or exploring really artists or, you know, learning about artists and artwork until I started diamond painting. And more specifically, when I did my first summer with the Masters is really when I was like, oh, this, like, I had no idea, like, all of this, like, older artwork existed, or I guess I existed, but I didn't have a, an appreciation for it until I did Summer with the Masters 2022. So that kind of really opened me up. And now I kind of, my Instagram feeds me a lot of uh, new artists and stuff, just because, you know, a lot of what I'm looking at is artwork and, and like the crafty things. So I get exposed to a lot more artwork now, which is really cool. So yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Um, Caitlin Janelle 9967 said in regards to uh, that same whip and chat, love these videos. Thanks for sharing. Of course, I love doing them. I'll, I'll keep doing them um, as I have time and energy and all of that stuff for it. I've been meaning to record this particular whip and chat for uh, probably, uh, I guess, about five days now. It's been like on my docket to do. And then every time I go to do it, I'm like, I don't know if I have the energy for it, but um, after work today, I was feeling pretty good and, um, and yeah, I was like, let's get it done. So we're here doing it. Thank you so much for the comment. 
Kelly Queen QT8YH said in regards to that same video, Van Gogh was not considered a real artist in his time and certainly never achieved commercial su success in his time. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. I, I watched a little documentary. Oh, Apollo just burped. <laughs> I watched a, not a little documentary, but I watched a documentary on YouTube um, all about his life and, you know, everything that happened. And it was kind of a wild story. And yet he didn't really start seeing any sort of commercial exposure until like very end of his life, which was kind of crazy. So yeah. Um, thank you so much for the comment. Get a couple more of these bad boys down. And moving into this, just whip, flipping back and forth between single and multi-placing with these, these pieces here. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Um, Mary, Marino, Marina, Marina, is it? I'm going to say Marino Connor 8083 said in regards to my finish and review of Beyond Good and Evil. Wow, love it. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked it. Um, same commenter said in regards to my entire diamond painting stash 3.0. Great selection of styles. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the, the positivity in the comments there. That's awesome. Yeah, I have a pretty wide range of different types of artwork and styles and Plenty of rounds and squares and different sizes of kits, although my stash skews more towards large canvases, which I'm trying to rectify. But um, yeah, I try to keep a good mix. I have varied interests, so my collection definitely, definitely reflects that for sure. Um, Carla um, is responding to my vlog episode 92. The microphone is just fine. You sound fine. Okay, thank you. And you are crazy for going out there. Oh, that's the one that I did when it was like super duper cold and the, the microphone kept shutting off because I think it was like freezing or getting too cold. So I had to just use the microphone that was on the action camera and I was worried that it wasn't gonna sound very good. And this, today's video is being recorded just with the, the microphone on my phone because um, I may have not charged the other mics <laughs> in the minute and uh, I went to go open it and I was like, ooh, I don't know if either of those are going to last long enough for <laughs> an entire whip and chat. So um, I had to, I'm just using the regular camera um, phone mic. So hopefully that's looking good. I'm getting a little residue on these drills from this putty. Um so she's, uh, she says they don't, um, wait, wait, wait. Um, you're crazy for going out there. I have to take my girls out as well. And I'm dreading it. They don't like the cold. We're in Chicago and the wind chill on top of that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's freezing. Have a good one. Thanks. I hope you had a great day too. Bev Jones said in regards to that same vlog, enjoyed the update in life info. Hope to hope you get to the karaoke, but don't freeze. What would Apollo do? <laughs> I hope you finish the rest of the projects you have in focus. Stay well and safe. Peace and the love abide with you. Thank you and you as well, Bev. I appreciate it. I did not go to karaoke that night. I got home and I was like, yeah, it's a little too cold. So I stayed in that night. But, um, and I don't think I've gone to karaoke since then. I need to get back into it. Um, I keep saying I want to go and then I have the intention of going and then I just, I'm such a little homebody. So I'm just like, eh, I'm going to stay home, but I'll try. I'll try to go soon. Um, J Ping Su said in regards to my whip and chat, uh, responding to your comments, part six. Um, oh, so I had asked them if they wanted to dive in a little bit more about the Dada movement that they had mentioned. So they said, of course, the short version of Dada, um, Dadaism, it was an anti-art movement that rebelled against gatekeeping and art in society as a whole. A lot of best known pieces are found objects or mixed media that would incorporate newspaper clippings. Definitely a movement that challenged the idea of what or could, uh, or could not be considered art, much like the AI and digital mediums have been doing. That's really interesting, awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, Google that and look into it a little bit more, maybe see if there's some information on YouTube. I love like one of my favorite like evening activities is to put on some kind of documentary or expose or something like that on YouTube. Um, I have to be in the right mood for it, but I I usually do that a couple times a week where I'm just like, 
let's learn about this. In artwork um, documentaries, or periods of time as it relates to art is like a huge interest of mine. So I will have to take a look. I feel like this putty is really leaving a lot of bits and pieces on these square drills. It wasn't doing that over the weekend, but I was working on a round drill canvas. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there. To be honest, something that I have found with a couple of scents of Mary Mud, and I'll talk to Mary about it, and it's just the nature of I have too much Mary Mud, <laughs> and I have a collection of it, but this Mary Mud flannel, I think I got in the fall of 2022, so this is well over a year old, this Mary Mud, and I think as, I'm not sure if it's all putty or, you know, it depends on the formulation, but I found that some of my scents are starting to get a little, it's, I don't want to say dry, but I think it is like getting a little dry. So sometimes I just, it goes faster. It's like it starts losing its stick faster than I expect. And I'm noticing a little bit of residue on some of these drills. So I'm not sure. I, I mean, it's still picking up and it seems to work fine, but then I feel like it. I just burn through the older ones faster. So maybe I need to focus on using my older ones before before I, I can't use them anymore. But I'll have to check with her on that and see what like the shelf life is. Because normal like craft putty, I know people keep that around in their like, you know, craft rooms and stuff for ages. So I'm not, I'm not too sure, but Anyway, so we just finished that color, and that was DMC 934. So we're going to move on to DMC 936 for our next color. Da, da, da. I really enjoy working on this kit when I do get to it, but um, I was gravitating more towards my round drills for a little bit there. 46, there we go. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, thank you so much, Bella Luna, for the, uh, or J Ping Su for the comment. I appreciate it. Bella Luna is coming back with a comment on my vlog episode 92 saying, oh, Bo oh my, your mic is fine. The sound of you crunching through the snow is making me feel cold. I just looked right now and it's negative six degrees Fahrenheit in Aurora. Yeah, it got pretty cold. And I am so glad I have a huge backyard so the dogs, uh, can run around and um, so I don't really have to do walks. Don't get yourself sick being out there in the cold. Stay safe. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I I do play with fire, I guess, a little bit going out in the cold like that. And, you know, there's the potential of getting sick. But we don't have, well, we have a backyard, but it's not super secure. Like the fences, the fence needs to be redone. And so I worry about Apollo being a little escape artist because he's done that multiple times in the past. So I can put him, he has a lead that I can clip him into out there and it's like 30 feet. So he can access the majority of the yard on the lead. But it's it's also about the, him getting the exercise and the energy release. So he'll walk around out there, but he's not like sprinting and running and uh, you know, getting the same amount of exercise that he would if we were going on walks. And he kind of demands that we go on walks every day. So yeah, I have to just bundle up and do my best. Um, but I grew up out here in, in the cold in Colorado, so it doesn't really bother me that much. But I still have, I'm obviously should be mindful of like, hey, you could get sick out there, but uh, I've got a, I've got a little fluffy butt that I've got to, I've got to risk it for. So he's worth it. He's worth it. So anyway, thank you so much for the comment. Um, Kay Whittington4612 uh, said in regards to that same vlog, Anthony, I sent you an email that might help you find more affordable dog training classes. It should not cost thousands of dollars. Okay, thank you. I think I did see that. I will take a look at it. I'm so bad about checking my single and placing email because I don't really get too much stuff on it. And I have my like regular everyday email that I that I have as well. So I will go and take a look. I appreciate you sending that over. Um, but yeah, the places that I have looked at around here, like to go through the full the full course training class that they recommend is right around the two to three thousand dollar range when when all's said and done. 
So it is a little price prohibitive, at least the places that I've seen, but I will take a look at your email. So thank you so much for sending that my way. Um, okay. Uh, Leanne Palumbo said in regards to my whip and chat from January 14th, responding to your comments, part six, absolutely love these types of videos. I find them very entertaining and educational. I wish more creators did them. Thanks for keeping me company while I worked on Astronomer. Oh, hey, look at what I'm working on. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I I'm glad that you're taking some value out of um, that style of content and these styles of videos. I will keep doing them. Um, I haven't had quite enough momentum or really much to chat about in regards to the topic of um, supporting AI artwork and artists. Um, I can say that I'm really happy to see some more um, artists that utilize AI as a tool pop up on some really popular diamond painting sites and get the attention and respect and, um, you know, get the spotlight that d they deserve. Um, all, all Claire Studios, or Studio, is one um, that Diamond Art Club has been releasing quite a few pieces from recently, and they're a collection of artists, so several artists work under this studio, and a lot of them, from what I understand, utilize AI tools. Okie dokie. Oh, you just did a set. Okay, sorry, I do not know. I do not know what happened there, but it stopped recording, and luckily... I didn't get too much farther into my ramblings before I realized it wasn't recording. I have to stand up and check every so often. So, um, so yeah, I was responding to Leanne Palumbo's comment and, um, uh, yeah, I was just mentioning that it was cool to see some more, um, artists that utilize AI artwork featured on the Diamond Art Club site. It's really cool to see. Um, all, all Claire Studio is one that I've been keeping my eye on. So um, thank you so much for the comment. Uh, Tiffany Archer 6621 said, question, are you left-handed or is the camera playing tricks on me? Yes, I'm left-handed. <laughs> um, the camera is not playing tricks on you. Um, I'm going to do DMC 496 next. As you can see, I got a, mo a couple more colors down while I was rambling and then I realized it wasn't filming. So my apologies, you missed a couple colors there. <laughs> um, but yes, I am left-handed. And uh, yeah, it took me a little bit to kind of like figure out, I mean, it wasn't that hard. I just worked from left to right on my canvases. So my hand's not getting in the stickiness as I work my way across. But one thing that I haven't mastered, and I'm not sure if it's because I'm left-handed or it's just a hard thing to figure out, but I, I've seen a lot of people hold or put their tray like this. So when they're doing line blocking, they can just grab like five like that and drop them. I really, really struggle doing that. I always am off by a bunch and they're always a little twisty, a little turny. Like I guess I can make it work, but I feel like I'm focusing so hard to get vertical lines done with multi-placing. So anytime I have to do a line going vertical, I just single place it because I can't figure out how to diamond paint like that. I guess maybe just practice, but um, but yeah, I haven't quite figured that out. And so I'm sure I could diamond paint a lot faster if I didn't have to single place um, vertical sections like this. Um, and this kit has a lot of those, so I found that I'm single placing a lot on this canvas. But yes, I'm left-handed. Uh, Mia's Life with KFS said in regards to my whip and chat from January 14th, um, hmm, interesting about the cover minders being stolen. I've had the same thought a few times. Some creators show cover minders from shows and so on, and I wonder if a production company behind said show um, would consider it stolen. I believe so. Um, I, I don't know all the legalese around that, but I'm pretty sure any intellectual property like that, like, oh, it's the cast of Seinfeld on a cover minder, or, oh, it's my friend's cover, my friend's show cover minder, or... Um, my Rugrats cover minder or whatever, if that shop that you purchase that cover minder from doesn't have license to use the, those images and those characters and all of that uh, intellectual property, then I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. So it's something to keep in mind while you're out there shopping for sure. Thank you so much, Mia, for the comment. 
Jennifer Murray 4837 said, yes, 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 uh, on the video idea, brilliant. We need a little poking. All in good fun, of course, and some giggles. Great walk. I was exhausted after. Love little bro's set. He is fire. Great video. Thank you. Of course, um, that was in response to uh, my vlog episode 92, where I put in some clips of my brother's DJ um, set that I went and saw. And so, yeah, that was a ton of fun. And yeah, I'll be I'll be working on that video idea soon. Uh, once I move and get settled and get the camera and the filming equipment back together, I will um I'll get that going. So yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Kay Whittington said I have no opinion about AI, but it occurs to me that the same discussion probably occurred when photography burst onto the scene. Of course, now it's accepted, but I can imagine early comments about how can it be art if it was created by the click of a button. Yeah, I totally agree. I think anytime there's these advancements in technology and tools around artwork, it's probably going to be a little controversial. I think the, the, main, the main qualm with AI art continues to be where it's getting its information from because it's no one it's not asking permission if it can reference somebody else's licensed artwork um, to create its own original images and I think that's where the fight will continue to be focused on so I don't know necessarily if it's like how easy or not easy it is it's just where it's pulling its its data from or where the original creator of the software pulled its pulled their data from. So I think that's where the conversation will continue to be. Um, you know, because it's creating original artwork from th um in in learning, um, I think that's where the misconception is. Um and it's something that I'm still learning more about. Um but yeah, I I I don't know if we'll ever see any sort of like firm regulation on that. Um but yeah, I totally agree. I think there's pro there was probably a lot of discussion when photography kind of burst onto the scene. So, yeah. Um, Lisa0815 said, hi, hi, Anthony. I totally agree with you. I like what I like, and I don't pay attention to if it's AI or traditional. I just buy what I find beautiful. I think all, all artists are valid considering I can't do either form. Thank you for always being intelligent, informative, and kind. Standing up for people is always a mark of a beautiful soul. Oh, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. I, and yeah, I mean... Aside from wanting to dispel some of the um, misconceptions about how AI art is created and um, and kind of kind of talk through it and learn alongside you, um, the main thing, the main point that I want to drive home is, regardless of how you feel about AI art and the process and and that type of thing, um, it's not okay to bully or attack or come after um, artists that utilize AI as a tool in these diamond painting Facebook groups. And I continue to see it pop up. Um, usually it happens if someone's asking a question about a piece of artwork that is generated or was creating utilizing AI. Um, it happens a lot when um, someone will just ask the question, you know, what is AI art? I keep hearing this thing. And very, very soon after a post like that goes up, there's always someone that's like, well, it's when a bunch of thieves get together and like, get, it's a bunch of evil people get around a cauldron and, and try to destroy art. It's, it's like people just, I don't know, I get that you have your strong feelings, but we're, everyone's also a human and they deserve to be treated with some grace and some humanity. And even if you don't respect the craft or what they're doing, that doesn't mean you get a pass to attack them on social media or make them feel less than. So um, every time I see it going forward, I I used to be a little bit more cautious about putting, commenting much on other people's stuff on social media because I do have a channel and I just, I like to kind of just keep a lot of my thoughts to myself when it comes to like Facebook. I just kind of look at it, but I don't really engage with anyone there because this is my space to engage. But I think I'll be more inclined or I feel a little bit more um, empowered now, um, having learned more about the process and talking with some of these artists to chime in if I see that kind of attack mentality and be like, hey, you know, my suggestion would be to, you know, educate yourself a little bit on the process. And regardless, these people deserve 
to kindness and respect. They're not less human because of the artwork that they decide to create. So stop treating them like that. Um, so that's kind of my mindset there. But thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. The such kind words. I love it. Um, so Elizabeth and Edward um, responded to that same, uh, to the vlog episode 92 saying, I think if done correctly, a parody would be amazing. There will always be someone or a few someones who get upset no matter what. But if you do a little disclaimer that this is all in fun or something, maybe the title, just so it's crystal clear that it's all in good fun, it could be absolutely amazing. I mean, I make fun of myself all the time, so why not? Um, I LOL'd about Apollo's adventures when he got loose only because I was thinking about it from his perspective, as dad, it's, dad is no fun at all. So glad he was captured safely. Hearing the crunches you walk on the snow makes me happy and sad. Happy because I love it, but sad because we haven't had snow for a long time, and who knows if we will, ever will again. The last pic I saw of your sitara was so beautiful. Cannot wait to see it completed and to hear the details of all the swaps. So yeah, um, that video's up. The, the finish and review of sitara is up, so go take a look. And you may have already commented on it. I just haven't gotten to it yet. But yeah, that one was a lot of fun to do. And yeah, I, when I was little... Um, the crunching of the snow kind of like gave me the weird, like it almost made me kind of clench my teeth and would give me goosebumps. It's that like, I don't know, there's something about that, like the friction of crunching snow under your feet that would always make me go, ooh, when I was a kid, but I don't mind it anymore. But yeah, you'll have to, you know what, even though you might not see snow directly where you live, you book that plane ticket and come out to Colorado. <laughs> Thank you so much for the comment. Um, Cheryl R941 said in re response to that same video, love the parody video idea I'm in. Okay, good. Well, it's coming. Um, Leanne Palumbo 5906, same video said, it was 30 today in Southeast Texas and we were all frozen. Can't even imagine what below zero feels like. I think the parody will be fun. I love to laugh. It's my favorite thing to do. Okay, cool. Well, it's on its way. So be on the lookout. Um, I didn't even say what symbol or what dmc that last color was or maybe the last couple i'm so sorry and i don't remember what symbol it was <laughs> but it was something it was something pretty it was a pretty color i don't remember but regardless we're moving into um we have a little bit of 310 to do here so it's gonna be eight always got a little 310 right every section sometimes in certain kits always gives a little 310 actually don't mind working with uh 310 it just happens to be like the most it's al almost always the trashiest or like has the most inconsistent drills because it's just so mass manufactured and i think the molds that they use for 310 just get used so much and probably not cleaned as well as the other ones so you always end up with some messy 310s. Diamond Art Club does a really good job about keeping them, keeping them looking good. But I can already just look at this tray and I'm like, that one's wonky, that one's wonky. But I try to do my best to work with what I'm given. I've been, I've been getting more picky with picking out trash drills and trying to have like a a really like put a fine tooth comb through drills. Um, but at the same time. If it's something that's easy, I can easily put on there and not worry about popping drills or wonky drills, I'll just use it. So I'm not like going crazy where I'm like, if you really get in there with the microscope, you can see a tiny little tab. I'm not doing that, but I used to just put them all down. Like I did not, I did not differentiate unless it was like just so, so trashy that like it would be silly to put it on the canvas. But even if it was a little crooked or a little wonky, I was still cramming them on there, but I'm trying to get better. And even just, you can see, even just shaking these drills back out in the container, I'm left with some trash here. So I'm just gonna dump that over here and put it in the trash container. Cool, and I think, yeah, this is my trash container so far for this kit, so. All righty. Um, so yeah, next comment. Let me make sure we're still recording. Okay, cool. So this comment has a little bit of back and forth, which is awesome. I love to see this. So let's, we're going to just read through the whole thing. So Lisa Noof said regards into my, uh, in regards to my whip and chat from January 14th said, Anthony, I think it's a great idea for you to do the comparison between the Japanese temple by DAC and the company who is doing it in smaller sizes 
so new diamond painters can see how low quality stolen art is. I wish I had known when I first started diamond painting. My first kit was a Josephine wall image, which I now, which I know now is called the Three Graces, and it was a 30 by 40 centimeters in round. Uh oh. Um, I didn't know it was stolen because it was brand new, like because I was brand new to the craft. It was also a partial with the faces not having drills on them. The faces had glue but no symbols, so I had to keep plastic over them as they were sticky. Ugh. Um, obviously, at 30 by 40, you cannot tell what anything was. If you do this comparison, the newbies can avoid wasting their money on stolen art and find more reputable companies to purchase from. Good luck. Um, and then Von Kaiser 209, hi Von, came in and said, opposing view, do not support them by buying stolen art, even to show comparison. I think you could get the idea across by comparing different sizes of a stock image. Um, and then Lisa Newf responded saying, I don't agree with buying stolen art either, but my thought was that if Anthony could buy it once to give a finished review on both the Diamond Art Club version and the stolen version, it would give a clear picture of the difference. Artwork is being purchased by thousands of people every day who don't know the difference. If I could have seen a comparison when I first started out, I would have not purchased the stolen artwork because I would have seen how horrible it looked and especially I would have known it was stolen. Um, so you and I are on the same page here. I just think if Anthony could purchase one or two smaller sizes of the same painting to do for comparison, people would see it and it would prevent many, many other people from purchasing stolen artwork in the long run. And then Vaughn um, responded back and said maybe he should ask the artist at Image World how they feel about it. It could go either way. Yes, uh, put us to the test or no, don't support stolen art at any cost. So thank you so much for the um, for the comment, both uh, Lisa and Vaughn. I appreciate that back and forth. And I love seeing this kind of engagement between subscribers and commenters that's kept respectful and kind and just sharing opinions and not even with my engagement or, you know, the content creator's engagement to see folks engaging in this way is so, so cool. So I love, love, love seeing this. I'm, I was so excited to see that. So thank you so much, both of you. So yeah, I see both sides of this. Um, Apollo, hold on just a second. Um, so yeah, I see both sides. I, I definitely don't want to support stolen artwork either. I'm just going to pop in another color while we're chatting. And this is AB 101. Um, about not supporting stolen artwork. I never want to do that, but I also want to, I think it, I think that particular kit would be an excellent example of why purchasing from some of these like AliExpresses and Timus and all of that stuff can sound like a really good idea. Um, but, um, um, oh, to, I don't know if I mentioned this. Um, I think you, uh, Vaughn also said, I think you could get the idea across by comparing different sizes of a stock image. I don't know if I finished that comment or not. So I, I, could, I see that of showing different sizes of a stock image, but my intention, you know, if I was to go on one of those sites and they had a stock image, I could just get two different sizes of that. That's not really what my thought process was there. I wasn't trying to prove like, here's the difference between buying a smaller kit and a larger kit. And here's the difference of the same stock image. I'm trying to show the difference between, I'd like to show the difference between a, a legally licensed hand charted image from Diamond Art, a company like Diamond Art Club um, and the care and the time and the attention that goes into why they pick the size that they pick, why they pick the drill shape that they pick, and versus one of these companies that just rips licensed artwork from another shop or the artist directly and just cranks it out. They don't care what size it is. They don't care, you know, the color count. None of that matters. It's just about getting someone to buy it, you know, and then they get it and see what it actually looks like. But by that time, it doesn't matter. You know, people are not likely to return it. Um, it's a low purchase price for um, usually, you know, like 10, 20 bucks or less. So people are less, uh, are more, are less interested in going through the whole return process. So once they get you to buy it there, they can kind of just move on um, and keep selling it. So I, I kind of want to show what that really looks like. You think you might see Secret Temple on a website and be like, ooh, pretty, and it's only four bucks or $2 or $10. I'm gonna get that instead of going through Diamond Art Club, especially if you're a newer diamond painter, you might not know what the true difference is. 
And then I want to actually show like, this is, this is what you're paying for when you go with a company that actually cares about the artwork that they're releasing on, on their, on their shop. So that's kind of the intention. So I totally get where you're coming from Vaughn. Um, and I agree with you. I don't ever want to support shops like this, but in my head, I'm like, okay, if I, if I bite the bullet and go against my <laughs> better judgment, maybe it'll save someone like Elisa from, from doing the same thing, you know, and maybe my one $20 purchase towards something nefarious like that will counter, will counter the potential hundreds of dollars that same shop would have made had someone not seen that video. You know what I mean? So it's like kind of taking one for the team a little bit. It still makes me feel very icky <laughs> because I don't want to give them a single penny of my money. So I think where what where you landed, Vaughn, of asking Image World how they feel about it, I think that's the route I'm gonna take. Um, I'm gonna see if they're they do that collection of artists does have an email address or some sort of contact me page, and I'll just let them know about my intention and see if they're like, yeah, I mean. It doesn't hurt us by any means. I, I mean, I could I could almost hear them saying they already stole it from us. So, I mean, <laughs> we've already lost what we're going to lose there. Um, but if they do come back and say, no, like, that's not, we don't, we don't think that would be valuable, um, then, of course, I won't do it. And maybe I'll pick a different image to, um, to work on because I've seen plenty of artists um, images pop up on those AliExpress and Timu and even Amazon. Um, a lot of those places, you may art have um, a bunch of her artwork has been stolen and is being carried on. I think it's AliExpress right now. Um, so I, I might reach out to you may and see what their thoughts are on it, because I do think it would be an interesting comparison. Um, because I think a lot of people, when they do start diamond painting, they don't understand like the difference in quality, like a diamond painting is a diamond painting is a diamond painting, you know, and it's more about price for them, which is fine. You know, that's totally valid that price is your most, that's your bellwether for whether or not you're going to buy a diamond painting kit. But if that's the route that you're going to go, then I would, I'd like to provide a little perspective and some education on, okay, if you want to keep it budget, look for stock images, Look for sales at your local um, hot, your local craft stores because a lot of them have clearance diamond paintings. Like go that route rather than trying to find an image that you saw on like a diamond art club or elsewhere and trying to find that for cheaper. I think people don't realize that how bad that is because <laughs> it's something I kind of started doing when I first started diamond painting. I was like, okay. I see this image on Google or I saw it on, um, on a shop. And then I would just type in like, you know, uh, galaxy, galaxy diamond painting or something like that and see what came up. And I wasn't paying any attention to like where the image actually came from. So, so yeah, I, I see both sides to it. I could just go, go ahead and do it. I honestly, you know, at the end of the day, it's more of a personal thing where I just would feel icky as opposed to thinking like my one $8 purchase from some random shop, um, that stolen artwork is going to completely like, you know, is going to be this, a big thing, you know? Um, but it adds up. That's, that's the important thing. It adds up. So if I can like prove to 10 people to not get Secret Temple from Timu or wherever I found it. Um, if I could convince 10 people to not click buy, then then I, I feel like I've, I've done my job, you know? Um, but I totally see both sides and I'll probably ask Image World. So thank you so much for the comments, both of you. Um, Von Kaiser, in regards to my Whippin chat from January 14th, same video said, oh, you made me feel so special. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, that's, I love hearing from you, so. Um, Hannah over at Sparkling Spectrumite said in regards to my unboxing of the Tea Party by Ivy Dullamore, this one is so cute. Yes, it is. I can't wait to get started on that. Um, Sarah Barden in regards to that same video said, this is such a fun kit. I love the colors and so many details. Very nice. Thank you, Anthony, for showing this. Of course. Thank you for watching. Um, 
Hooks Books Podcast 5914 said in regards to that same unboxing. Lovely unboxing. This one will be so fun. Yes, I think so. I think it will be. Um, user dash GR16 said, great unboxing. I like this one. Thank you for sharing. Of course. Thank you for watching. And Tracy Cruz 5793 said, I love this one. I, I waited so long for the restock. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I don't know when they, I, I know they did restock it. I don't know when that was, but yeah, I remember it was like, it popped up on restock and then it was like gone again. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I haven't been keeping up on colors and stuff. I get distracted, but I am going to be using a specialty drill. These are the gold sparklers for squares. So you can see their little itty bitty round drills. Um, and this is, re I replaced DMC 782 on this canvas for these metallic gold. So we're going to go in with these and they just fit right into the square shape, which is awesome. Ba -ba -ba. I think they look really good. If I had to do it again, I probably would have picked more enhancements, but this is my first time using these smaller round drills. Um, and so I was a little bit conservative for which ones I picked, but now that I see them and I like them, I wish more of it had them, but next time, next time, there's always another kit. Um, Patricia Matei2362 said in regards to my vlog episode 92, Hi Anthony, I agree with you concerning Diamond Art Club and the huge diamond painting with lots of colors and squares. The last weeks have been full of them. I am currently working on my last diamond painting and squares Medusa from Diamond Art Club and after that I will keep a maximum of one large diamond painting and squares in my stash. All in for the parody. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it and I hope you are doing well too. Um, so... For, I had mentioned in that vlog that they were, there was this like run of kits a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago that Diamond Art Club kept releasing that I was like, okay, now this one has 90 something colors. Now this one has 700 and what, like, it just like kept going. I was like, oh, please don't make this like a trend of, you know, we're just, we're going to just try to increase the color counts higher and higher because that's what people are like really into right now is like I hope this isn't a trend but then they completely proved me wrong or like made me feel comfortable again because they released that uh big old launch of the little little diamonds little diamonds <laughs> I was mentioning on uh, Mia's live this past Sunday that little diamonds sounds like a rapper <laughs> a rapper's name it's like yo 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 what up this little diamonds <laughs> So anytime I see it or hear it, I immediately go, Little Diamonds. <laughs> so anyway, Little Diamonds. Um, they released a bunch of those Little Diamonds kits. And um, so, yeah, apparently, you know, they proved me wrong. They're not going hard into the giant color count kits. Like, we're not chasing that. It seems like they're still fully invested on releasing some smaller snack size you know, easy to sit down and do in a couple of days or in a week kind of kit. So I I love that they're still offering a, a large variety of of kits for everyone. And now they've got these little diamonds kits that um that are geared more towards, you know, younger folks, people that want a, a quick small kit. And I'm like, oh, they're really trying to get them while they're young, you know, get people, get kids hooked on diamond painting. Um, and then they can graduate into the, the bigger kits. But I love seeing it. I mean, if they can encourage more, more kids, families to do this craft together, I think creating more of a social um, kind of group activity out of a craft that is pretty solitary in nature is very smart. So if you're working on your astronomer and the kiddos or the grandkids or someone else is working on little diamonds, then everyone gets to do it and you can still chalk and chat and like bring more people into it. I think that's really cool. So hats off to Diamond Art Club because that that's, it was a very good idea. Um, so Melissa Brooks said in regards to my entire diamond painting stash video uh, version 3.0, sorry, I just keep checking the camera. Love the length of this video. I, I got so much work done on my whip. You reminded me a bunch of um, of a bunch of Yume's in my wish list saying to snag it as well. LOL. So thanks. Of course. <laughs> Happy to enable. <laughs> 
Um, Michelle Callender said in regards to my unboxing of the tea party, very nice unboxing of this cute canvas. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Mia said that kit is so beautiful. I think I have it on my wish list, but I have a ton on that list. Thank you for the unboxing. You did great as always. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. I love that people are loving that kit. Um, Kathy Weber said, beautiful picture. I've been away for a while trying to get caught up. Great unboxing. Thank you for watching. And I hope you hope you get caught up and I hope to see more comments from you. Um, Jeffrey Morrison over at Echoes of Color. Hey, Jeffrey. Um, said, hello, the atmosphere of this canvas is wonderful. What an excellent array of colors. All the best. Thank you. And you as well. I appreciate it. Jennifer Murray said in regards to my finish and review of Sitara by Micah Jelena said, oh, M goodness, <laughs> you made a beautiful painting. Absolutely gorgeous. Amazing job. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I love that finish. It's um, it's hanging in my office right now next to Polani. And when the sun hits it, because it faces out to the windows, when that sun hits it in the evening, oh my gosh, the sparkle off of that thing, it makes the whole wall have little little flecks of light and colored purple and pink sparkles on it like a disco ball. It's so cool. <laughs> I need to take a picture of that during the sunset and show everyone. Um, Caitlin Janelle 9967 said, I'm going to have to order that one now. My favorite color is purple, so I have to have that one. Love your videos. Thank you for sharing. Of course, thank you for watching. Um, Bling It Up said, beautiful finish. I love the enhancements. Thank you. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was a, a lot of enhancements for sure and a lot of fun to work on. Um, I just poured DMC 336, so there's a bunch of that in here. I'll just pop a couple drills down. I haven't been doing as much diamond painting on this one as I did the last one. I try to like take little breathers, get a drink, take, you know, take a sip of whatever I'm sipping, which is an energy drink right now. I needed the caffeine to, to get this video done. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, um, and just put a couple drills down just to make some progress. I really like these blues. Um, they're some of my favorite like navy, navy shades and like true blue shades. I really enjoy working on them. Sometimes they can get a little taxing for me um, if there's like too, too much. I remember when I was working on Star Maker from You May Art, that one I ended up, took me a lot longer to finish that kit than I had anticipated because there's a, a ton of these shades in the background and I would get like a couple, like half a section of it done where it was all just these colors. And I'm like, okay, I need a little break. I need, give me some pink. Where's my pastels? <laughs> and then I'd come back to it. So it's nice that this kit has quite a bit of it in the background of the galaxy and the stars, but then you get into some bright colors, which is nice. So yeah. Uh oh, this putty might be coming up to the end of its life. Um, so thank you so much, Bling It Up. And then we have Jen Barry 5340 said in regards to my whip and chat from January 5th. Hi, Anthony, I'm Jen. I'm sure you know they sell different light pads. Some charge, some plug in, and you can turn it on place. You can turn it on place to light setting. Oh, place the light setting you want. Slide underneath your diamond painting, and it brightens up the small symbols, especially confetti areas. Excited to start my two bigger new diamond paintings. Looking forward to seeing more of your videos. Thanks for your videos and you yourself. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I I, I love the comments. Um, so yeah, I have a light pad. Um, I got one. I want to say about a year ago, I got, I just went over to Joanne's, or I guess it's Joanne, and I picked up the Diamond Dots light pad that they carry, and I used it for a little while, but I didn't find it helping me necessarily any more, you know, any more or less. Like, I felt like I was diamond painting at the same speed, the symbols looked just as clear to me, you know, and right now I have a ring light, like a big old ring light, um, looks like a floor lamp. And, um, so that's what's on right now. So I can adjust, like we can get dark, we can get really bright, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I can adjust that depending on what I need. And I usually put it at an angle. So the shadow of it 
is being cast away from my hand. So I always have it on the right side of me. That way, even when I'm diamond painting, I'm not casting a shadow over with my hand on the drills. So um, I tend to find that to work pretty well. I usually have it churned up pretty high when I'm diamond painting. So it's actually brighter now than it was just a second ago. So I can see the symbols a little bit better. Um, I think I was working on, I don't remember what I was working on. I think I was working on Beyond Good and Evil. Um, but I didn't really have too many issues with those symbols necessarily. There was some on Borealis that were hard, but it wasn't because they were small. It was because they were a little blurry. The printing was a little off. So maybe a light pad would have helped with that. But for whatever reason, I just didn't see a ton of value for me personally with a light pad. And then I was like, you know, okay, grab your light pad, plug it in rather than just being able to sit down. So for an efficiency's sake, I ended up not using it. It's still sitting in the closet, but I just kind of stopped using it. But maybe I'll grab it again and see if my opinions have changed. I also got, um, where'd they go? Oh, I packed them because I'm, I'm moving in two days. I also got the Art Dot magnifying glasses for diamond painting. I got those a few weeks ago and I never mentioned them because I used them like twice. And it was difficult to get them over my own glasses. And then once I did that, it just felt a little awkward on my head. And then I didn't think that the light on those was particularly helpful. And I just felt like a little awkward, awkward Annie wearing glasses with glasses on top. You know, I've already got the glasses. I don't need to, <laughs> I don't need to be glasses on glasses. <laughs> so... I did a, I wore them for like two diamond painting sessions and then I kind of stopped using them. So I don't know. I think just my regular old eyes and just a, an overhead light has seemed to be working the best for me, but I'm not opposed to trying it again. Maybe I'll grab it again next time I run into some difficult spots, but thank you so much for the recommendation. I know they make those giant light pads. I can't even imagine. Mine is whatever the diamond dot size was. It felt like it wasn't too big and I, I like mobility. So I like on a flash being able to just be like, pack it all up, move it all. We're switching canvases. We're switching this. So having like a four foot light pad, just, I don't know, not for me, not for me, but yeah, thank you so much. Polly Tobin said in regards to my finish and review of Satara, let me check filming. Let me pause you just for file size. One second. Okay. We're back. Um, so Polly Tobin 5233 said, beautiful work. Love the blue eyes. Thanks for sharing. Of course. Thank you for watching. Uh, Michelle Callender, in regards to that same finish, said the enhancements in your keen eye created a beautiful effect. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. M my eye is not that keen. <laughs> it's I, I think it's easy to do. Maybe I say that and it's just because it's it's just in me to to kind of recognize colors and and uh, match them up and stuff like maybe I just ha innately have that but it, I just kind of when I'm kidding up I'll grab a color like let's say I'm kidding this up and I'm like okay we've got I bet you this is 939 we've got this 939 here um what do I have in my stash I've got a deep blue sparkle or whatever I have enough to do you know to do a swap I'm just gonna do it so I usually try to do that and I avoid colors that I have a ton on the canvas a, because I'd have to order more sparklers and they're, they get pricey once you get that big, you know, with that high amount. But also, I don't necessarily want to do sparklers on a background. So usually, the high amount of colors that you have is usually a background color. And it's the smaller amounts, like for instance, this little half container of green, um, the smaller amounts are usually doing some more detailing, highlighting, adding some pops of color. So that's usually where I'll be like, okay, there's just one half container of this. I'm going to go ahead and swap it. So like with that, um, let's see, I've got this one I saw on this kit and I was like, oh, what do I have? Uh, or what would I swap that out for? And I had this Capri Blue or I ordered this Capri Blue. So that's kind of how I do it. I Sometimes I'm not even really necessarily looking at where it is on the canvas. I'm just assuming that that it'll kind of work out in the end. And you can't do that with every shop um, because of the way that they render. But I've found that Diamond Art Club canvases are much easier to enhance than other shops because 
it's a little bit more chunky, their rendering style. So you're not, you're not necessarily going to be worried like, oh, they're going to use that same blue as a blending color in the subject's cheeks or something like that. At least not that I've run into. Of course, there's always exceptions to that, but I've personally found Diamond Art Club canvases to be a little bit easier to enhance than others. So um, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the comment. Uh, da, da, da. Hartana said in regards to my whip and chat from January 14th, responding to your comments, said, congrats on all the, all the new followers. So close to 2.5K. Thanks for keeping me company during work. Oh, yay. I'm glad that you're listening during work. That's so awesome. I have my favorites that I listen to at work as well. So I appreciate it. And yeah, I um, hit 2.5 thousand subscribers. <laughs> and that's so crazy to say out loud. Um I hit that just after Christmas or right around the new year, which was really cool. And I don't ever have any sort of like, okay, I'd like to hit this amount um, of subscribers. Like I, I don't play the numbers game when it comes to my content creation. I kind of just, you know, post stuff and hope people enjoy it. And that's really kind of how I, how I operate. But it is cool to see when you hit a new milestone. Um, so that was really cool. And I didn't, you know, I didn't think I'd ever have anywhere near that many subscribers. It's kind of mind, mind blowing to, to even say that number or see that number, which, so that's really cool. And yeah, we'll see where the next year, couple of years, you know, as long as I'm here doing content, we'll see where it takes me. Um, but yeah, I hope that people, you know, enjoy the channel, enjoy the content and um, continue to share with friends or family members. Or if you see a new crafter or diamond painter pop up and, you'll, and you want to offer some video suggestions, you know, point them my way. So yeah, thanks. Um, Hartana also said in regards to vlog episode 92, at least Apollo is joy enjoying the cold, even though the rest of us aren't. I also listen to pretty much everything on a higher speed. When a video changes to normal speed on anyone, it always seems like they're talking so slow. Love a parody video. I say go for it. We all know us diamond painters can be a little ridiculous. Yes, we're an interesting group of folks for sure. Um, but yeah, I had mentioned on that vlog that when I'm listening to audiobooks, I'm always always I'm almost always listening to 1.25 speed or 1.5 speed. And so when I do accidentally hit the the normal speed, I feel like everyone starts talking like this. And I'm just like, come on, let's move. <laughs> and maybe that's my that speaks to my lifestyle and maybe I need to slow down a little bit because I'm a fast talker. I always have been. And I like when people just, let's just say it, let's say it, let's go. <laughs> like, let's get to it. Uh, and, but I'm also a storyteller. So I think that's also why I talk fast is like, I have a lot to say and I'm trying to like paint a picture, but I don't want to keep you waiting too long. So I'm going to try to give you the give you as much detail in a in as as fast as I can. <laughs> so sometimes I do have to remind myself to slow down. I'll never forget when I get nervous, I talk really really fast too. Um and so I one of my good friends Dom, Dominique, uh, she's been on the channel before. If you haven't gone back and watched some of the really old videos from where I, when I very first started this channel. I think there, I think it was called Whip and Chat with Friends. Um, I did a Whip and Chat where I was working on a diamond painting, and my best friend Dom, um, Dominique, she was working on um, some of her jewelry that she does on Etsy, and so she was staging and doing uh, photos of her jewelry on one side of the table, and I was diamond painting, and I was working on Midnight Laundromat, which was my first diamond art club kit. We were working on our two individual crafts together on the same table and I filmed it. So it's just us chit chatting and just she's she is my spirit animal. I love her. And so I want her to come back and do another one of those because we have a blast. But I'm wondering if like that that version or that style would be as popular because I think people will find a lot of connection um in listening to me talk directly to you um, as viewers, as opposed to just listening to two people talk. So I would have to like make sure to keep bringing you all into the conversation too and remind her to do the same. Because personally, 
Um, I like when someone's doing a whip and chat just solo and talking to me, it feels like they're, we're having a chat. But if there's a third person in the room, I'd be like, hey, I'm the one talking to Katie or I'm the one talking to Mia. So, um, so I don't know. You'll have to let me know. Do you like that idea of having a friend in the mix? And we'd have to make sure that we include viewers into the conversation. But anyway, so before she and I did that, when I was doing my skincare channel, I had her on my skincare channel a couple of times. And one time I was so nervous. I had her in this room. I had all this skincare out and we, I was going to go through building a skincare routine for her, but I was so nervous. And so I was like, the intro was like, hi everyone, it's Anthony back with um, AJK Beauty. And today I'm here with my friend Dom. And Dom, do you want to introduce yourself? And she just looked over at me and she's like, slow down, like take a breath. I was like hot and sweaty. And so she helped me get over my fear of like filming because I've had, I had a little bit of a, a little bit of a phobia of just talking into the void. And then having her there, I felt like the pressure of performance, you know? So but she helped talk me um, down from that and we ended up having a great video. But um, yeah, let me know if you want me to start inviting some friends because now I'll be living in Golden as of the end of this week back in town and she lives just down the street. So I could have her over to do whip and chats all the time. Um, I'm also thinking we might start doing whip and chats outside. Like I will take the craft table and put it out in the yard and... I will just do a whip and chat out in the yard. I think that would be kind of fun. <laughs> so anyway, I have a lot of ideas of the new place opens up a lot more opportunity. But anyway, um, so thank you so much for that uh, comment, Hartana. I love it. And yes, the parody video will be coming soon. Um, Bev Jones, in regards to my finish and review of Satara, said, I came out so beautifully. Wow, you really glitzed this out, but uh, but good job, I think is what it's meant to say. Beautiful. I wonder about yellow and oranges in the eyes instead of variations with yellow. Just curious. Thank you in advance on the placing of specialty drills and regular. Good to remember. Peace and love abide with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm just going to take a sip here. Mm. So tasty. Um, yeah, I I would be curious about the yellows too. I just went off of what the original image kind of showed. But if you look at my finish and review of Polani, um, I'm sure you already have, but if you want to go back and take a look, that one has yellow and orange eyes. And I think I did those with sparklers too. So you'll have to go and take a look at that. But yeah, interesting. Um, Lori Lopez... 3667 said in regards to my cross stitch conversion series episode one setup. Oh my gosh, we're really going back. <laughs> Watching videos on how to start and set a cross stitch conversion. I still haven't purchased because I don't know how to go about it. Learning with these videos. Oh, thank you so much. I hope that you got some useful information out of that series. I need to go back and continue that series on because. Um, I did a few videos for that and then I kind of just <laughs> left it. Um, I can't even remember if I left off. Okay. Sorry about that. The, uh, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. Oops. Sorry. Um, the camera cut out yet again. Ugh, that's so frustrating. Luckily I hadn't rambled on too far. So yeah, if I, if I am able to get back into that cross stitch conversion series, um, I will, um, Lori. So be a, I have no idea when that would be, but <laughs> it may happen in the future. Um, Lori also commented on my cross stitch conversion series episode two. So that was the second video I did in regards to cross stitch conversions asked, how do you know where to place the drills? So, um, yeah, essentially what you do is once you've purchased your pattern, your cross stitch pattern from whatever shop you decide to buy it from, that pattern is what you're going to utilize to figure out what goes where. So just like an, a cross stitch, you know, you get the pattern, it'll say, put this stitch here and they'll have a symbol. It's a nine or a four, or a heart or you know, a donut, whatever image they use on the little symbol. And that tells you to use your floss, your DMC floss 310. So you'd grab your floss, you do your 310 stitches, so on and so forth. It's the same thing, but you're going to do that with your drills. So instead of stitches, think diamonds, you know. So if it's telling you to do a 310 stitch, you're going to use a 310 drill. So 
Almost think of it as someone taking all the symbols off your canvas and pulling them all off and putting them on a piece of paper, and you have to match. You have to say this goes here and this goes here. So you're just reading the pattern and copying it onto your canvas. So um, if I if I do get back to my cross stitch conversion anytime soon, I will um, try to to walk everyone through that again. Um, there's some other really great um, content out there in regards to cross stitch conversions. Um, my go to for anything diamond painting related is usually Katie over at Diamonds and Washi because she's pretty much dabbled in everything and she does have some videos out there um, talking about her cross stitch conversion process. So I would point you in her direction as well. But if you have any specific questions that were not answered for you or you haven't been able to find or you just need it said in a different way, I'm all about teaching people the best way that they learn. So if you want to connect with me on Instagram, my link to my Instagram will be in the description of this video if you do get around to watching this one. And you can message me. I'm more than happy to FaceTime with you if you're comfortable with that. If you want me to break it down in an email or something like that, whatever way you learn best, I'm happy to help with whatever time I can set aside for that. So yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Geraldine Lewis 91 uh, 9154 said, it, uh, in regards to my finish of um, Satara, said, it's beautiful. Do you seal your work and what do you use for your, seal for your sealer? I found that when I swap my drills or something else, I lose the sparklers. Interesting. Once again, I most commonly use my enhancement drills on Diamond Art Club kits, and I have not had any issues with popping drills, sparklers, enhancement drills, or otherwise on those kits. So, I don't seal my canvases unless I'm giving them away as gifts. More specifically, if I'm giving them to someone that I know might manhandle the diamond painting. So a lot of my male friends who I give, uh, who I've given kits to, um, I, I say that a lot as if I've given a ton of them away. Just one, um, which was uh, where the fun never ends, I sealed that one. And then the other times that I've sealed a canvas is because the shop um, had a sealant product. So I've sealed two Distracted by Diamonds canvases, and that was because D Distracted by Diamonds had released a diamond painting sealer and asked that I test it out. So I did a test. But other than that, I do not frequently seal my canvases. Um, like I said, mainly just to test different methods. So I've done, so I'll just talk, I'll just tell you what I've used. Um, I've used the diamond painting slash puzzle sealer um, and glue from Distracted by Diamonds. You can find that on their Etsy shop. That seemed to work really well. I've also used a glue product that I got off of Amazon called Tombow Mono Aqua Glue. And if you want to learn more about that, I have a video on how I seal diamond paintings that I put up. So you can take a look at that. Um, I learned about that product from Christiane Hare, who also has a video on using Tombow Mono Aqua Glue, and it seems to work really well, and it doesn't um, doesn't dull the sparkle, which is nice. So those are two different options. Uh, Katie over at Diamonds and Washi has also used a Minwax product as well. That seems to work really well. I haven't tried it myself, but I do plan on giving it a shot. And then I know some people also use Mod Podge for their, um, their canvases. So there's a few different options, but I haven't experienced issues with specialty drills in particular. I just have sealed canvases to play with different sealants, not necessarily because the canvas needed it. Um, but yeah, you'll have to let me know if you, once again, if you need any additional information, you know where to find me. So thank you so much, Geraldine, for the comment. Um, Charmaine Cruz 2316 in regards to my vlog episode 93 said, I'm so excited for you this year, Anthony. I, I really love fall. The best seasonal fruits thrive around this time and I love cooking and baking with them. Once again, really enjoyed the dog walk. My doggo passed away last year. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, last year in October and this walk brings so much joy to me. Thank you. Uh, um, <laughs> I have been such a a softy, a little emotional wreck when anyone brings up pet stuff recently. Ugh, I don't want to cry. <laughs>
I don't know what it is recently. I think it was my scare with Apollo's injury. And, um, and so I have had a really tough time when I see or hear stuff with pets. <laughs> it really, like, immediately I just tear up. Like, I just, I don't know... Okay, we can't we can't talk about it too much, but I just don't know what I would do. I, that's all I can say without being a mess. So, I fe I'm so sorry for you, Charmaine, and um, yeah, I I could I can't imagine I can't imagine. And please don't let that. I want I will accept. I I want people to comment whatever they want to. This is an open forum here, but let's keep the stories about dogs being sick or passing don't let me say this saying saying how this gets to me encourage you to <laughs> encourage other folks to mention it more you can of course i'm not trying to tell you what you can and can cannot comment on on videos but i just you're just be warned that you'll see you'll see a really messy <laughs> messy anthony if i have to sit here and talk and and read all of your comments about pets passing. Oh my God, that would break my heart. Please don't do that to me. <laughs> but I also don't want people to feel like they can't share that stuff. What You share whatever you want, but just... Uh, oh my gosh, some of these articles about... Cause, because um, I, I read a lot of articles around dog and pet care. That's pretty much all my news feed is, is like this new pet toy or studies say that when a dog wags its tail in a certain direction, it means this, like that's all my news feed is. That, diamond painting, skincare, and Apple products and electric vehicles. That's really, I've really curated my news to be about some very specific topics. But once in a while I'm scroll scrolling through the pet, um, pet section and it's like, oh gosh, my heart, my heart. Especially when it's like, ugh. Um, um, dog rescues that will find a dog that's been abandoned or abused. And oh my gosh, I was reading one today or I started reading one today. They found this dog. I don't mean to bring the mood down. We'll, we'll bring it back up, but they found this, um, they found a dog that had been abandoned after a family had moved out and its legs had like pretty much completely frozen because they weren't paying the they weren't paying the utilities anymore and they just left the dog there to essentially just starve and die. But someone found it because it was crying and barking and whining and they went in there and I think one of the doors or the windows were open or something and it was, you know, it's been dead cold and the poor dog's legs were like completely frozen. <sighs> okay, all right. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Okay, moving on. Um, Jeez Louise. My, I am, I am a, such a softy for, for dogs. Ugh. Um, okay, Bella LaLuna has three comments, um, all in regards to my vlog episode 93. Um, she said, that event sounds awesome, Anthony, I, although I always miss out on those types of things due to my aversion to social media sites like Facebook and Instagram. I have been hoping to get more points, but since you can't use those points on sales, it just doesn't make sense to me uh, to just hoard them. I really want that kit, a question of reality, but I'll have to see if it works out. No problem. And I completely understand the aversion to social media and Facebook. I mean, more people should have that aver <laughs> aversion to, um, to social media. Um, some people should be, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you have the right mindset there when it comes to the, uh, Facebook and Instagram sometimes. So I'll make sure that when I do this paint along, um, it will be heavily YouTube focused as well. And it kind of needs to be because, Essentially, what I'm going to do is cover some of the subject matter in each of those and do a little mini book report on like eight different subjects within that kit over eight weeks. So it's going to be mainly YouTube focused. So if you are just casually watching along with me and maybe you leave in the comments, hey, I ended up getting the kit and I'm working on it, that's participating. You know, I'm not expecting people to put progress photos or prove their work or anything like that. I don't really, I probably wouldn't put together any sort of Facebook group for it because there's no tracking of progress. There's no prizes. It's just something I'm doing. And if you want to come along with me, you're more than welcome to. Um, and maybe I'll do something where you leave, 
you know, if you're, if you put something in the comments of all eight videos, if you comment on all eight of them, then I'll put, I'll add your name to a list and I'll do a drawing that way. So you don't need to be on Facebook. You don't need to be on Instagram. You don't need to prove that you even have the kit. It's more about engaging in the conversation about some of the topics in that artwork, as opposed to physically working on the kit. So don't worry. I want to just engage with people and spark people's interests and get people to think about some stuff more than um, getting you to buy a kit or work on it. If you do happen to, then awesome. So no pressure, very low stakes here. So don't worry. Um, Bella Luna also said, my son has gone to Disney for the last three years around Christmas. Lucky. If that is what you want to do, then do it. He even went to New York City by himself when he was in his early 20s. He's He is 30 now. His stance is that if... The, is that if there is something you want to do, then do it. Otherwise, you'll forever regret not doing it. I totally agree. I've lived it. I've lived a life of wishing I was doing stuff or had done stuff for so long, and I'm kind of stepping out of that place and that shell. So I already priced out my trip to Cedar Point. I've already mentioned it to a couple friends in case they want to go. So I think I'm going the 21st, the 22nd, and the 23rd of June, which is my birthday weekend. I already took the time off of work. It's just a matter of booking all the stuff, but it's a little early, too early to start booking that. Like the website at Cedar Point hasn't even started to release their tickets yet for the 2024 season, at least not since the last time I checked. So I will be, I, I don't want to say it and then it not happen, but I have every intention of doing a three-day weekend in Cedar Point this year. So yeah, we'll see. Um, let's get some more drills down. So as you can see, we started a new section. So, okay. Um, Bella Luna said at the last 15 minutes now, and I hundred percent agree enough said, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for the comments there. Um, Miller Thyme, Miller Time Mama. There we go. I keep saying thyme, but thyme, like the, uh, like the herb. Um, Miller Time Mama said, absolutely stunning in regards to my finish and review of Satara. Really enjoyed hearing about where you place the enhancements. Awesome. I'm glad you liked it. Um, Tammy Short, 4568, said in regards to my entire diamond st painting stash video, I truly enjoyed this video. I love all of your videos. I'm sorry you got stuck with Garfield. I love Garfield. It takes me back to my childhood when life seems so simple. I'm hoping to purchase this someday before Amazon stops selling it. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. And you too. Yeah, I, I got a little heat for my, how I, my, my, feelings and my vibe towards that kit that poor kit I didn't give it any love but I do like it I just Garfield isn't a character that I would I am particularly drawn towards for diamond painting but I do like him as a character no hate towards Garfield on my end whatsoever I think that's like the third or fourth comment that was it's like I love Garfield I'm like I wasn't saying I didn't like him <laughs> All the Garfield stands are coming after me. <laughs> um, I'm going to grab a new putty. Um, we're, we're making our way through the comments. We've still got a while to go. But I'm going to grab a new putty because this is it's starting to die off, which is no problem. So I'm walking away from you. And I'm going to just, if you want to, do you want to see my putty stash? If you haven't seen this before, get ready. Get ready. I haven't shown this off too, too often. It's usually, it was usually when I was purchasing from Mary, Mary Mud, but I haven't purchased in a while because her shop's been offline because she's a new mama. Um, but here is my putty stash. So here's my extra bag of baggies from Diamond Art Club and then the rest of this. There's some other shops here. I've got, um, Butterfly Effect Wears, I have one putty from them, and then the rest of these are from Rose Mud, but everything else is all Merry Mud. So there's all that, and it's all color-coded. So I usually go in and I'm like, okay, I'm feeling purple, and I'll just go bloop and just grab one. <laughs> so what color are we feeling today? I think we're currently working on blues, so let me grab a blue. And so we're going to be working with uh, Blueberry Pie Mary Mud now. So, um, and I guess I can quickly show you how I reload since we're here. Um, so if you're not familiar with Mary Mud or haven't used it before and want to know how to, 
you're getting a little, a little crash course. This will be a quick one. So we've got our Merry Mud here. As you can see, I've only used it for my single placer a couple of times. Mmm, it smells more like um, grape bubble gum or maybe blueberry bubble gum. So I have my tweezers here, pointy tweezers. Here's my thin metal multi-placer. I don't worry about damp. Some people say you can damage the multi-placer by using these tweezers. I've yet to experience any issues. So I just dig in there and grab the uh, putty out of there and just, hopefully you can see this in camera. Grab it. I like Mary Mud because it releases really cleanly. You don't get a ton of residue inside your pen tip. Just so, some little bits, but it's like super minimal. Like I really have to get in there with like a brush or something and brush it out. But there's that. And then on the opposite side, I just take that tip and just get it right in there and boom, the whole, it just pops right out. So I set that aside. That's going in the trash. And then I have my piece of putty here. And so I'll grab a sheet of release paper. I usually would not do this on my canvas. So this is a, I would not do this normally, but for the sake of showing you in the camera. So here's my piece of Mary mud. And then you have the, this was on top of it. So I just kind of place it halfway there. So I'm not touching the putty. And then I take my pen tip and I just go in there Give it a nice firm press, a little rock back and forth, and a little wiggle side to side to break it off. And there you go. So you've just pulled out that putty. Now, since this this paint um, this pen tip is a little bit deeper, I usually do that twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that little excess that I left behind and just pull it off like that. And then before I do anything else, I'm gonna flip around to my single placer side and I'm gonna go down and give it a good press and roll. And like that and then i'm going to do that one more time just to pack that in there press and roll boom so now that i have the putty in my placer let me make sure we're still recording um there's a bunch of excess because i used a little too much so i'm going to go back onto my release paper and i'm press i'm placing it a little bit at an angle like that i essentially want to snip that off right almost like a cookie cutter so i'm just going to go over and pinch and then flatten that side. You can see, whoops, uh, what, where's that drill from? There it is. Um, so you can see I pinched it, so there it's just coming right off. And I just do that until I get all that excess off because you don't want it to be like flowing over the sides and grabbing a bunch of other drills. But if you kind of lean and pinch, lean and pinch, lean and pinch, you can essentially just cut off all these little extra bits that you have. And now I'll go back and use those in the future or in the same diamond painting session if if I need to reload. So let's say I need, it was time to reload. My putty is getting compacted. I'm not picking up drills as well. I would just come through and stab that extra piece and reload. So um, this doesn't go to waste. Then with my single placer, once I've done my little pinching method on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just press and roll, not super hard, just press and roll, and that's gonna cut it off of all the edges. And then I just kind of take my finger and get rid of that little excess. So now I'm all loaded and good to go. And that'll last me for like a full diamond painting session, if not multiple. Um, I've gone as long as like half, like I could have done half of Satara, it felt like with just one load. Um, with new putty, sometimes it squeezes out because there is excess in there. It has to make room for the divots of the drills. So you'll, you might see what I do there if we get to it. But anyway, so that's kind of how I load the Mary mud. That's how I load all putties. Um, some people will take a little piece of it and roll it and pack it in there, but I, I tend to find that to work just fine. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Tracy Cruz said in regards to my vlog episode 93, Thanks for all the great content, Anthony. I love to listen. Hi, Apollo. Oh, thank you so much. I will tell him you said hi. He's laying down in the other room right now. So you can see I picked up six drills with that, which is okay. Some people like the extra drill. I don't mind it, but I try to, if it's a five placer, I like five. If it's a four, it's a four. But you, some people are like, extra drill. And I do too a lot of times, but I my perfect situation is when it picks up exactly what it's supposed to. That's much better now that I reloaded. Um, okay, 
Thank you so much, Tracy. Leanne Palumbo said in regards to my vlog episode 93, a great video again. My favorite seasons are spring and fall. I love them both equally. Listening to you talk about some nasty content creators made me remember high school. And Lord, I graduated 43 years ago. Tell me about it. Um, deliver me from a bunch of vindictive women. <laughs> my grandmother always told me there's three sides to every story, yours, mine, and the truth. I also raise my kids that way. I'm not one of those people who will always take your side or defend you to the death because your family or friends. I don't expect it of others. I'll flat out tell someone it's not their fight. I don't know who these content creators are business owner is, but I'm ready for the parody. It'll be great. Oh, gl glad <laughs> or good. I'm glad that you're, you're ready for it. And you know what? Um, I, I have, I don't have any ill will towards that shop owner, I think. And once again, this is my thought. I'm not trying to speak for this person. I'm not that person. And I've never engaged with this, this shop owner before other than purchasing one of their products. But like I said, it just made me feel bad that you know, either there wasn't anybody else that was wanting to step forward and speak on her behalf or their behalf, or they didn't feel comfortable speaking on their own behalf. So it's just unfortunate the folks that did come forward on, on her behalf or on their, sorry, on their behalf, um, to defend their friend. Um, I, I will defend friends to a certain extent, but I also, think I'm more of the person to support someone by lifting up and being positive about who they are and what they offer as opposed to attacking the person that they feel has wronged them or there, you know, there's an issue. So I'm more about trying to sh prove, show a friend or get them out of that mindset and, and be uh, able to stand on their own two feet and build that confidence than push, you know, asking them to step aside so I can claw somebody <laughs> to claw somebody apart on their behalf. I just think that's a more mature approach. And I think it's what, to, what builds a more long lasting and, um, and meaningful friendship is empowering those around you, um, in a, in a positive way. And if they want to take that empowerment and, and, you know, fight their fights, then great. I'm glad that I was able to provide them with that, that confidence or reassure, reassurance. So it's just, you know, it's just a, it was just a very immature and kind of childish, um, way to go about what happened there. And I think it was really apparent. Um, and yeah, I just, yeah, it was just unfortunate that those were the folks that, that decided to come forward on that person's behalf because I'm like, to me, it, I walked away from it, regardless of how I felt about that, the whole situation, I walked away from it like, ick, 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 ick. And I feel bad for that, for that shop owner because this is not, this, this isn't making anybody that engaged in that, um, that live stream come out looking, looking good, you know, even the people that were in the comments, I was like, hey, I know you from Happy Place, and here you are cussing out this this person. And I was just like, wow, true colors, huh? So it just, it helped me to kind of reassess how I approach um, the social space of diamond painting for sure. Um, so yeah, and so we'll see. We'll see. I, I think it's enough time has passed, and I, I think it, I laugh at it now because I'm just like, <laughs> it's so silly, you know, to be letting, letting diamond painting and, and, you know, the little accessories and stuff that we utilize, let that consume you so much. And you're so like lost in the, he said, she said that, like, I'm going to put together this live video with this like ticker tape thing across the bottom that's like, it's like, alert, alert, F this person, or, you know, whatever is like, it's just so silly to me how, um, how, uh, I don't know. It's just, the video in itself is, is a parody. <laughs> like, it is a bit of a joke. So I should, I, I feel like I can, I can make my own version. <laughs> so...
Oh, whoops, I thought something was falling off the craft table. It's just my art.storage box was settling. So I've just done a bunch of multi-placing with that putty. So now I have the divots from the diamonds are pushing out some of that excess. You can see that kind of flipping up on either side. So I can either just flip that right back in to the, the pen tip. My other option is to come back in with my little sheet here and just do one more little pinch just to get a l last little dregs of the excess putty off. So, so yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's that. Um, uh, okay, thank you so much, Leanne, for the comment. Um, Junie Birch said in regards to my entire diamond painting stash uh, 3.0, thank you for including the thumbnails. Have you checked with that craft store you mentioned about donating your toolkits there? Seems like someone could use some uh, some of those supplies. I haven't checked with them directly as in like calling them to double check, but last time, I guess I did check with them. Last time I donated a diamond painting to that shop, I forget which diamond painting it was, but it was from like a mystery kit or something. And I just was like, I'm not going to use this. So I took them an entire kit unopened. Um, so maybe I will call and check with them again to see if the accessories are something they'd be interested in um, and go from there. I am starting to get some more people around me at work um, that are starting to diamond paint. So even if I'm not able to donate them, I might be able to give them to some coworkers who have kids that are now diamond painting. Um, so I might be able to find some use for them outside of donating them to that store, but I, I do need to get on that. So thank you so much. Um, Speech Crafts said, my favorite is fall, although Louisiana rarely has fall. It's usually summer and a short spring. That was in regards to my vlog episode 93. Yeah, I, I would imagine it's, you're not seeing a ton of winter in Louisiana, but um, I love fall. Fall's my jam. Fall and spring. I love, I love a rainy overcast day and we usually only get those in spring and fall around here. So yeah, thank you so much. Hartana said in regards to that same vlog, I say take the trip. I always wanted to go to Cedar Point because they used to have a music festival that I wanted to go to and a festival at a theme park always sounded like so much fun. Fall is definitely my favorite season. I love hoodie weather and the colors when the leaves change. Yes, me too. Um, I had no idea that they did music festivals there. It sounds like they don't do them anymore. You'll have to tell me. Um, but yeah, I... There's just so many roller coasters at Cedar Point. I think all of them so that I've I watched like POV videos of other people going on them. I'm like, whoa. And when I was a kid playing roller coaster tycoon, which I still play from time to time, I would build the Cedar Point roller coasters and stuff. It, it, ah, gosh, I'm so excited for that trip. Hopefully it happens. But yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Diamonds and Stuff dash TM6UX said in regards to my unboxing of the Tea Party by Ivy Dullimore. Um, just love this canvas. Um, thanks for sharing. Of course, thank you for watching. Lisa said, Lisa Newf said in regards to my vlog episode 93, hi Anthony, autumn is my favorite season because it has more comfortable temperatures to go outside, not too hot like summer and not too cold like winter. I hate winter because we get too much snow. Do you find it hard to see Apollo when the snow is down? LOL, yes, yes, you might've been joking, but yes, I have a tough time uh, find, seeing where he is when we go on hikes in the snow. Um, so that's why he has... Um, Oh, I'm back. Hello. Sorry. So um, I just had to cut um, cut that clip because my roommate came home, made dinner. We were watching TV and I was just hanging out with him because we only have a couple of days left of being roommates before I move. So it's like, I'm just going to hang out with him and I'll finish my <laughs> whip and chat tomorrow, which is today. So I'm on my lunch break. I was like, let me try to get through some more of these comments try to get it done during my lunch break. Otherwise, I'll have to keep going after work today. But um, so yeah, we're back. Uh, last night, after I hung out with him for a little bit, I came back and I finished this section that we were working on um, and then went to bed. So now I'm on a new section on this canvas. So I'm making some good progress on this kit because of this whip and chat. So thank you. Um, but yeah, I wanted to jump right back in. Um, I was responding, I think, to one of Lisa's comments in regards to could I can I see Apollo in the snow? I can't. I struggle with seeing him when it's really snowy out and everything's white. Um, 
but he does have his little light on so I can see him when it starts to get dark. And during the day, it's not too bad. And I can hear him because he's got some stuff on his collar that jingles and jangles so I can hear him. Um, but yeah, sometimes it is hard to see him. So yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab our next color, which is symbol eight. And that is DMC 606. Where are you? There you are. And so this one, I do have um, a substitution that I did. So these are the Coral Reef sparklers from Squares from Diamond Painting with Sparklers. So we're going to be working with those. Okay, so in regards to my unboxing of the Mooney Made trays that I purchased um, from Bella La Luna, she says, I haven't purchased any from Mooney Made. I do have a couple from Bella Art De Nicole and have one on the way from Bijou Bliss. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, I have, um, oh, there's, I've got one of my own hairs. My hair is so long right now and unruly. But yeah, I, um, I have tried a couple of trays from a few different shops in my time, but I've just personally found that I like the, uh, the height of the walls, the sides of the Mooney Made trays I really like. And I find the grooves, the actual like printed lines in the tray to be really nice. And they're pretty sturdy and they're big. I always go for the large size. Um, I like a larger tray so I can have my hand around it pretty well. Um, so yeah, I just like the functionality of the Mooney made trays and because there's something that isn't disposable, like I, you know, you don't run through trays. I found some that I like and now I pretty much stick with them. So, um, yeah. And then there's a few replies to Bella Luna's comments. So I'm just going to go through those. Maria Martinez said, I have two sizes from Bijou Bliss and I love them and use them all the time. I haven't tried Bella Art trays and just received my first diamond painting from Bella Art. You have yet to try Mooney Made, but I'm aware of the hype with theirs. Yeah, I mean, um, Mooney Made trays were kind of some of the first ones that I uh, learned about when I was trying to like upgrade my diamond painting accessories. And there was some, I guess, hype around them back then. They're just a desirable tray and... Um, and they come in some really cool colors. So congrats to Mooney Made for kind of building that uh, really like reputation of being like a desirable tray. I really like them. So I, I guess I get it. Um, Becky L306 said the hype is because of the elusiveness. Hard to get so people want it, which in turn makes it hard to get. There's nothing special about her trays. I do like them, but they're not the end all for diamond painting trays. It is the psychology behind it, like the Starbucks Stanley Cups. I don't understand that Stanley Cup thing, but um, anyway, um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess they, I mean, I think that they perform better than some other trays that I've used personally. So I, I do think that there is something special about her trays and the colors are just really awesome. Like I don't see a lot of shops that do these color changing colors. So I personally think there's something special about them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think everyone kind of likes what they like. And um, I think it's smart of her to build that that uh, sense of like, got to get your hands on it. I mean, that's marketing 101. So I think it's smart in that regard. Uh, Bella Laluna said, that makes sense. All the sense of the world. I think a lot of diamond painting community operates in such a way. The business models of these diamond painting companies is outstanding. Where else do you uh, get basically free advertisement and sales people by, by only giving them a sample of your product. Um, I, I'm not sure if there are, maybe there are diamond paint. Well, I guess diamond art club does send out like sneak peek kits and stuff, but I really haven't seen Mooney made send free trays out or samples of trays. I mean, you can't really make a sample of this. Um, I think they're just high quality and people like them. So, um, but yeah, and then as far as like the free advertisement thing, um, I guess I could see that, but it's not just diamond painting companies that um, that do that. I mean, I, I've done a lot of content creation in regards to skincare, and that is much more prevalent as far as like people getting PR and like sample sizes of a cleanser, and then people talk about it. So I see it more frequently in a lot of other um, like markets and like different product categories where you'll get like samples like I know food companies like HelloFresh and stuff they'll send out sample boxes and stuff like that but I don't see a lot of free samples being sent out or free product being sent out as often in, in diamond painting because 
that's a that's a pricey you know i've been lucky enough to get some products sent to me or some kits sent to me for review but that's a lot pricier to send a free diamond painting than it is to send like a little bottle of cleanser or like a free hello fresh meal or something like that um, I'm currently working with AB133 right now, but thank you all for the comments. Uh, Maria Martinez, final comment for that chain said, I agree, it's crazy at times what people are willing to spend their money and en energy on to each their own. I'm just here with my popcorn taking it all in. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I if you've got the funds for it and you like something and you want to invest in it, then I don't I don't see a problem with that. I mean do what you got to do. So, and I do that too. Like I, I like these particular trays, even though they're not the cheapest trays. I mean, I guess I could just use the trays that Diamond Art Club provides, but it's, it's also about, you know, liking the color ski, the color um, of the filaments. And I just feel like as far as efficiency goes, which is kind of what I look at a lot when I'm diamond painting, um, having a bigger tray where you can fit more drills in and it's more comfortable in the hand. So it just, it helps me diamond paint faster and for longer. So yeah, but thank you all for the comments. I really appreciate it. Um, Lisa Newf said in regards to that unboxing of Mooney made trays, those colors of Mooney made trays are beautiful. Anthony, I was having a hard time trying to get her trays because they're always sold out super fast. So I put my name on the custom wait list a year ago and now I'm down to 60 away from getting them. Woo! Hopefully by the summer my churn will come up. Yeah, I hope so. Um, yeah, she does her best to keep up with everything and she's a new, uh, fairly new mom as well. So she's working out all of that stuff. The other thing that you can do is if you're interested in um, a diamond painting from Mooney Made, you can upgrade your toolkit to get a matching tray from her as well. And I believe those are pre-printed and ready to go based off of her inventory for her kits. So if you order a kit and order the upgraded tray or the upgraded toolkit, it's not that same super long wait, like you'll get it with your kit. From what I understand, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think that's kind of where her business model has gone is printing uh, trays for her toolkits, for her kits, more than she's printing these custom orders, um, which make totally makes sense to me. So um, yeah, thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. Let's just make sure oh, we're still recording. Okay. Um, uh, Partha Narajan 1152 in regards to that same video said, enjoy your trays. They are sure are super pretty. Seems expensive, but worth it. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I think I can't remember the custom trays. So if a tray set, the large one with the lid and the stopper, I think is around $30. And of course there's trays that you can get from uh, other shops that are less expensive. But once again, I've spent quite a bit of money on on other trays and other styles in the couple years that I've diamond painted and these are still continue to be my favorite to work out of so I'm like is it is it cheaper to just keep buying more and more of these trays and then I end up not using them or just invest in the ones that I know I really like and to me it's it's uh, more valuable to invest in the, the ones that I know I like instead of having a drawer, which I currently have right now, a little storage drawer full of trays that I don't use. That seems like more of an expensive option, but yeah, you'll have to let me know maybe what your, um, what your favorite tray is, uh, for those that are, that want to comment or are listening. Um, what are, what's your go-to tray? Do you just use the ones that come in the kit? Do you have some upgraded ones? Um, I've bought some off of Amazon. I've bought some from several different Etsy shops in the past. And yeah, I just keep landing on Mooney Made. It's the ones I like. But now that I have the colors that I want, and that's just a personal kind of collection thing, unless they release some more of the magic colors, um, I'll, I don't think I'll be ordering anymore. And I don't have my name on the wait list again because I have the colors that I want. But if there are some new releases, which I don't think there has been from Mooney Made as far as the filaments that they use, I haven't seen any new filaments come out at least since I started um, diamond painting. So it's been a couple of years. So I don't know. I think I have what they're going to offer as far as the magic colors. So I'm all set um, as far as trays go. So yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Um, 
Michelle Callender said, the watermelon tray is my favorite. I'm on the wait list. It will be a while. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm glad that you got on that wait list and you'll have to let me know when you actually uh, snag it. Michelle Hausberg 527 said, I love how deep they are. Yeah, the, the walls on this are pretty deep. So when you shake your drills, you're not, um, you know, they're not flying out or anything like that, which is really nice because I have used some dr uh, trays with shallower, um, shallower walls and I have to like, be very careful when I'm shaking in this one. I can just be like, <laughs> it's good to go. So um, awesome. Thank you so much for the comment. Um, DK6526 said, um, in regards to that same unboxing, I waited a while for mine and honestly, I am disappointed. They are well made and the colors are beautiful, but the lines are too far apart for me. The drills don't line up as well because of it. For the price, there are better trays out there at half the price, just my opinion. Well, thank you so much for your opinion. I appreciate it. Um, I've never really run into an issue with these these lines. I use it for squares. I use it for rounds, my specialty drills. I mean, I use it for everything. I do notice that, like, I can show you an example. When I'm using the small round drills, the sparklers for squares, because they're like little mini rounds, um, sometimes, so it didn't really do it. I'm getting some good lines here, but you can see they kind of start to zigzag because they're just, the, the grooves are a little bit too big. But I think that's just because these drills are mini round drills, but I don't run into that with my regular drills. So I'm not sure. Maybe it has something to do with the the drills. I, I honestly don't know. I'm sorry that you had that experience. And I my suggestion, anytime you run into stuff like that, just let the shop know and see if there's anything that can be um, resolved for you. But thank you so much for the comment. Um, Becky L306, in regards to that same video, said, your trays are pretty. I have to admit she has awesome colors. Congrats. Thank you so much. Thanks for checking out the video. Um, Mrs. Dragonfire8319 said, in regards to my entire diamond painting stash 2.0 that I did back in, um, I think that was spring of last year, said, love the video and I wish I could do large diamond paintings like these, but unfortunately due to my EDS, I cannot spend more than 30 minutes on um, on one a day at most. So it's took me six months to even get three quarters of a 30 by 40 centimeter done. Oh man. Um, well that's okay. I mean, no one's, no one's expecting anyone to go at a certain speed or complete a certain size. Do what feels best for you and what you're more comfortable with. And, um, luckily a lot of these diamond painting shops are continuing to release some of those smaller kits um, smaller size canvases. So hopefully you don't feel, you know, left out. There's some really awesome smaller size canvases. Thank you so much for the comment. Uh, Jess Diamond Paints said in regards to the unboxing of Mooney made trays, nice haul. I'm addicted to Bella Art de Nicole trays. I don't ever just use one tray. I've been spoiled by the tray tower method, so I never use storage cases, just kit up straight into trays. The Bella system had become my go-to. I also use the Add More Zest trays in a custom wood tray holder my husband bought for me. So if I if a kit has 64 colors or less, I use the Admar Zest setup. The rest go into Bella Towers. Finding our favorites in this craft is so much fun. I'm glad I have my systems in place now. Like you, I don't see myself buying many more trays in the future. Yeah, once you, with trays and the towers and stuff, once you kind of build your setup, there's not really a need to like collect or like amass more as long as it works for you and you feel that it's, you know, your most efficient way or your easiest way to diamond paint, then... I think you're good to go. Um, I looked at those the tray systems there for a while, but I think for me it was just a space thing where I didn't know if I wanted to have that on my crafting table. And a lot of times I'm like moving stuff around and reorganizing. So I haven't gotten into the tower thing yet. And I don't think I will because I like the Mooney made trays. So the thought of buying enough Mooney made trays to do <laughs> to do a tower it seems very expensive and very daunting. So I kind of just keep this set up. The only time I really grab a new tray, because I just do one color at a time, um, the only time I'll swap trays out is if I'm just in the mood for a different color. Um, there have been a couple canvases where there's so much 310 or so much 939 that I will just keep a tray full of that color because I'm constantly coming to uh, going to it. But I don't um, usually have like all the colors for a section or all the colors for a canvas at the ready. I have to use the storage containers. But 
that could probably be a way that I could um, increase my efficiency is if I didn't have to shake the drills back into their containers each time. That would probably save a lot of time, but it's the investment of building <laughs> building your setup like that and the space that that requires that has been a little bit of a deterrent for me. But something I might think about for the future, I'd have to write Mooney made and be like, okay, I know that custom orders <laughs> only allow five trays at a time, but I need... Uh, I need a hundred trays. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh, I could never see myself doing that. So I think I like my current setup. Just the thought of that. I'm like, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> I'd love to have the, you know, $3,000 or how, however much that would end up being. It'd be a lot of money to get enough trays for like, let's say I wanted to get enough for a, a hundred colors. Like, oh my gosh, that would be a pricey setup. So yeah, I, I think I like my, my setup right now. Maybe someday in the future I'll change my mind, but for now I'm I'm happy with what I've got going. So, but yeah, thank you so much for the comments. And yeah, I love seeing, I love seeing other people's tray towers. I think it's really cool. Um, Cheryl R941 in regards to my vlog episode 93. Wait, wigs will be involved? I'm definitely in. Yes, yes, wigs will be involved in a future video. I still need to buy those, but um, I need to s I'd figure out what kind of wig I'll need. So anyway, yes, thank you for the comment. In regards to the unboxing of Mooney Made Trays, Carol, um, Carol, my, oh my gosh, I always, I'm going to say uh, Carolyn Trim. I'll say that. <laughs> uh, says, thanks, Anthony. These are so pretty and I love the magic colors. I'm like you. I don't need a ton of trays, just some awesome quality ones. Have a great week. Thank you. I hope you had a great week as well. Um, Ethan and, uh, oh my gosh, Ethan DeBrice. Yes, that's right. Um, 7047 said, absolutely beautiful trays. Ma Mooney made are hard to get. My favorite trays right now are the Firefly Diamond trays. Love them. Oh, awesome. I don't think I've heard of those. I'll have to check them out. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for the comment. I'm just gonna smash a couple drills down onto here. There we go. Get a couple more. I made some good progress last night, so I'm like, I'm feeling pretty good, but might as well get a couple more. A couple more down. Okay, perfect. Um, Sparkle with T Ma said in regards to my finish and review of Fishbowl by Hava Gervich from Francesca Studio Works. Thank you for the re review. Gonna give her a try. Oh, yay. That's awesome. And then TX Laura said in regards to my unboxing of my Mooney Made trays, these are beautiful trays. I'm very far down on the wait list for Mooney Made. Looking forward to trying their trays, but I'm really happy with my Bijou Bliss and Diamond Art Club trays too. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for the comment. Okie dokie. So um, Bella LaLuna said in regards to my vlog episode 94, um, you really want to get sick, don't you? You really, you are really making me feel bad about ignoring all the job solicitations I get on LinkedIn every week. Um, OMG, Matt and Trey own Casa Bonita. I haven't been there in a long time. I think I need to go visit my son in Colorado sooner than later, just so I can go there. Apollo is fantastic. What a lucky guy you are that he chose you. Yes, I am very lucky <laughs> that I got, I got my little fluff boy. He's such a cutie. Um, yeah, Matt and Trey, um... I think it's Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, bought Casa Bonita. Um, and yeah, I think on that walk I had mentioned, or on that blog I had mentioned that I was underdressed for how cold it was getting, but it wasn't like Arctic freezing. It was just a little chilly to do seven miles. So I think on that, that walk we did just under three instead. So I shortened it up so I could get back into the warmth, but yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Um, Jess Diamond Paints said, wow, Casa Bonita looks more like a theme park than a restaurant. Hope the food improved. Yeah, it did. It was really good. I, I liked it. Um, and yes, it's definitely more of like a theme park slash restaurant than just a restaurant. It was, it was so much fun. I can't wait to go back. Elizabeth and Edward said, Casa Bonita, all the South Park memories I have of this place. Yes, it was that was like one of the most popular South Park episodes that uh, I think still is, or at least at the time. And that's what kind of put Casa Benita on the map in like the modern day. But of course, us, you know, the Denver locals or the Colorado natives were very familiar with that restaurant growing up. 
Um, I think it opened in 73, so... Um, Lisa Noof said, wow, Casa Bonita looks amazing. Hope the food was good, especially after such a long wait for a reservation. Yeah, it was really good. It wasn't mind blowing. You know, it's still a family themed restaurant, but it was better than what you'd expect for sure. Better than it was. Um, we have, is it Gail, Gail F1853 said, maybe you can get a belt pouch or fanny pack um, or courier bag worn crossbody instead of stuff in your pockets to help with the weight at your waist. Wish wishing you the best on your move. Yeah, I need to do something. I just jam everything in my pants pockets and in my shirt pockets when I film vlogs. So like the extra batteries and the other mic. And sometimes I've got uh, goodies for the boy and I've got some of his stuff and then my phone and, you know, I'm always weighed down. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I just, I do have a backpack um, so maybe I can just start bringing that more frequently. The only thing is like when I'm filming a vlog, I've got that chest camera on and all the, the straps and the mounts for the camera on my chest. And so when I have a backpack on, I have to take it off every time I need to get into, you know, get at something. So then, you know, the camera is going to be going all over the place. So having stuff in my pockets is a little bit easier access. Maybe a fanny pack could work. I don't know. I, I can play with that and try to find some different stuff. So thank you for the suggestion. Um, Melissa Belcher said, in regards to my entire diamond painting stash 2.0, wish you did a mixture of budget and premium diamond paintings. I say that only because a lot of us can't always afford to only buy premium kits. I'm happy you are fortunate enough to be able to do that. I just personally would be more interested in watching your channel if it had a diverse range of paintings. I enjoyed most of the painting, even though they aren't all particularly my style. It's interesting to see what other diamond paint painters are interested in. Thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I did see that comment when it originally came through and it just kind of had me thinking. Um, I just, you know, when it comes to diamond painting, it really, it really is personal preference and what you enjoy working on, types of artwork, styles of artwork, all of that good stuff. So I keep that in mind for sure when I'm searching for diamond paintings that I want to purchase. And then I also keep in mind um, purchasing from reputable shops and shops that I can trust are legally licensing their artwork from their artist. And I've found... Um, that when I start looking for like budget sites or I'm not even looking for budget sites, but just exploring, seeing what else is out there or just curious about what's going on in the world of AliExpress or some of these more budget shops that it's hard sometimes to tell if artwork has or has not been legally licensed. And me personally, when I look at like some of those stock images of like, oh, it's just a little snowman or it's just a, you know, whatever, um, it's just not really the style of, you know, I haven't really ever seen stock images that I'm like, whoa, I, I have to get my hands on that. Um, I'm just not particularly interested in them. So, um, and I'm, I really am not the type of person that would just buy it to buy it, um, because I don't have it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if, if I said to myself, okay, well, I want to start I want to start featuring more budget diamond paintings on my site or on my channel. I'm not just going to buy a bunch of budget diamond paintings that I have no interest in just to say that I do it. You know what I mean? Like that seems more like a waste of money. Um, I have per, I have been given some budget diamond paintings in the past from some really uh, kind content creators or as part of a giveaway and I've never actually completed one. I usually just break them down and kit them down so I can get the specialty drills out of them. But I even stopped doing that. Um, I don't really participate in giveaways or anything, so I don't collect things that I wouldn't ever use. So yeah, I, I wish I could tell you that I, I'm going to just start buying budget diamond paintings, even if they're not of interest to me or the, the artwork isn't of interest to me, but that's just not something I think I'm willing to do. But there are some really awesome content creators um, that do care, that do a lot of the um, FG normal and like a lot of those, those budget sites, they purchase a lot of those canvases and work on them. So I think this would be an awesome opportunity to kind of point you in the direction of some really cool people. Um, I like watching Joan Diamond paints. I like uh, Christopher Colossa. He does some really awesome budget canvases. 
Um, I think I've seen some budget canvases pop up on Diamond Painting with the, the besties, uh, Miranda. So she's got some awesome content. So I'd love for you to stick around, but I'm going to continue, <laughs> you know, purchasing and working on kits that I find of interest and what match my taste and that and are legally licensed. So that usually means that that kind of puts me out of that budget category, unfortunately. But that's not something that I'm, you know, worried about or or um, am concerned that I don't have. I don't, you know, I don't display those types of canvases on my channel because it's just not really what I enjoy. So I'm sorry, but <laughs> there are some awesome content creators out there that can that can definitely fuel that for you. So go and check those out. Um, thanks for the comment. Polly Tobin said, um, in regards to my vlog episode 94, the Mexican restaurant is quite the place. I hope you enjoyed the food. Yes, I did. It was it was good. It was good. Uh, Mia's life with KFS in regards to my vlog episode 91. You could try to look at Marilyn Casa Casanave on DAC for small square kits. Those would maybe be fun to see done in sparklers. Would you consider working on Astronomer in a whip and chat? Dun 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 dun. Here is Astronomer, and we're doing a whip and chat. Mia, we're here. <laughs> Hi. So um, I've never heard of that artist. Let me take a look since I have my computer out. Diamond Art Club. Let's see. Let's see what we're working with. She said Mary Lean. Let me see. M A R L I N E. Mary Lean Kazivini collection. There's the collection. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. See, this is the issue, issue I went into so much with some smaller kits. So we've got like puppies in cups and cats in cups and hedgehogs in cups. This just, they are cute. Don't get me wrong. These are cute images, but n this is not my cup of tea as far as like style at all. They're cute, but I just, this isn't, this isn't for me, unfortunately. <laughs> they are cute. I think this, these, some of these would look really good, Chris, uh, like done in full crystal. So maybe that's something that you can, um, you can take on if you're into this, um, um, into this artwork. If they're cute and they're beautiful images, I just personal taste, um, not something that I would probably buy. But thank you so much for the suggestion. Uh, Mia also said, "You and your brother look so much alike. I love that crunch of the snow when you walk through it." This is in regards to my blog episode ninety two. It is the best sound. We haven't had any of that snow this season. But to be completely honest, I'd probably not be outside in it. Maybe back. Uh, my back and neck really don't like the cold. Oh, I can totally see that. Um, that parody video sounds like a lot of fun, but only if you don't poke fun of me. Of me. Just kidding. Of course not. <laughs> You're more than welcome to, to um, if you so please. I love hearing you talk about Astronomer, and I agree it's a lot of confetti, but I love that. Give Apollo a nose boop and hugs to you both. Thank you so much. I will. He's right He's right behind me asleep at, um, in his crate. So, um. Mia also said, in regards to my finish and review of Satara, she looks amazing, Anthony. It's crazy. I need a diamond painting. I need diamond painting with sparklers warehouse in Europe. That way, postage wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, it can be kind of pricey with those international shipping costs. Um, and then Mia again, in regards to my unboxing of Mooney May trays, um, she said, "Pretty tray collection. My first non-kit tray was a Mooney made, and later I got a painted Paradise, both big with the lid and stopper. Then last year I got two small ones from Francesca. Since then, I found out." that I am in love with Bella Art to Nicole trays. I like the more rounded shape and the tilted spout. That way I rarely use the stopper anymore. Oh, interesting. Again, the issue is shipping because I'd love to get a, a white set from them, but oh well. Um, and how many trays does, do a girl need, right? I only ever use one at a time. Exactly, like I just use the one tray at a time as well. And really the only reason I have multiples, like I said, is because I like having the different colors, but I think I'm all set now. So um, we're done with this color. So that was, if I didn't say it, that was 38.54. And now we're going to be moving on to 38.53. I like this kind of peaches and cream um, orange. It's really cute. Love all the colors. Okay, we're getting there with the comments, everyone. This is going to be a long video. <laughs> Okay, so that is going to be 64. Okay, here we go. I might have to grab my other container. Yeah, let me just do that. 
got my secondary container here. Whoop. All right. That should be good. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for the comment, Mia. She also commented on my vlog episode 92. Oh, by the way, what do you think of Backstreet Boys since you like 2000s music and pop? Um, I'm an, I'm an in sync man through and through. I mean, Backstreet Boys are fine, but when I was in middle school, like that was the biggest thing. Like, are you a Backstreet Boys fan or an in sync fan? And I was in sync all the way. Um, I just found them to be, I don't know. I just liked their, their, their pop style, I guess, a little bit better. It was very similar, but I just liked them a little bit better. So I'm in sync all the way. <laughs> Michelle Callender, it said in regards to my blog, episode 95, sounds like you and your friends had a blast. Yes, we did. It was amazing. Um, Von Kaiser said in regards to that same vlog, I hope you exercise, um, I hope you're exercised for both of us because your breathing wears me out. And that's even before Apollo went crazy. Your excitement for Casa Bonita makes me so happy. I went as a girl in the seventies when we first moved here. And of course, bringing our kids in the nineties, I can't wait to have a churn with the grands now too. Um, in the twenties, talk about a legacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll have multiple generations going to Casa Bonita. That's, that's probably their goal. And that's awesome that you get to share that with them. It looks even better than I remember it looking in the nineties. So I'm excited for you to, to get to go when you can. Thank you so much for the comment. Um, Vaughn also said, love the podcast name. Yeah, I need to, that's on my task list to do um, soon is hop online and register that podcast name, you know, the drill. <laughs> um, and I don't know if I'll do anything with it just yet, just because I've got a lot of other stuff going on right now, but at least it'll be saved that way. Um, well, hopefully it's not already taken that way. Um, I have that name kind of held for when it's time to go. I've I've done a podcast or I tried starting a podcast once before for skincare and I forget the process, but I need to get online and figure that out. Thank you for the comment. Um, Bella Luna said in regards to that same video, um, the vlog episode 95, do you remember when Eliches was just a little thing and it always competed with Lakeside? That was awesome. Glad you had an awesome time at Casa Bonita. Told my son I want to go when I come visit but I can't really time my visit to when it would be convenient for Casa Bonita. Um, tamales, great. <laughs> now I'm hungry. Apollo, you are so funny and cute. I know he is just laughing inside, making everyone dizzy. Um, O'Brien Turning is finally done with my churned wood pen, all wood, no plastic, so I'm excited about receiving that. My thought is it will be more forgiving on my hand than the churned resin ones, um, then becomes like a worn shoe. Nothing is more comfortable than your old worn shoes. Interesting. I haven't, I think I have seen a couple all wood pens, but I've never used one personally. I'd be curious to see how comfortable that is. Um, yeah, the resin, I mean, obviously resin doesn't have like a give or a squish. So yeah, I'd be curious to see if it like a wooden pen would like wear in or get comfortable over time. You'll have to keep us posted on that. Thank you so much for the comment. Leanne Palumbo said, I like the idea. I think the idea of a podcast on what's new in the diamond painting world is a great idea. Okay, good. I'm glad you like it. Um, I need to, I need to get on that. Um, my unboxing of flower delivery, Bev Jones 7485 said, loved when I loved this when I first saw it and snatched it up. Has a French vibe to me. I don't know about the fan thing. Anthony, when I purchased, I got the first version, which they pulled, I believe, and it didn't sell out, I don't think. I know this is version two and is the only diamond painting from DAC that was done, that this was done to, I believe. It, I have it in my stash, but do you know why this was? I missed any reference to this. Hope you enjoy working on it. Peace and love abide with you. Thank you so much and you as well. Um, I don't know the exact reason why they pulled that first version. I, from what I remember, I think if I remember correctly is Diamond Art Club wasn't super happy with how the rendering of that image turned out. So they ended up pulling it and, and going over and charting it again. So I think it ended up having more colors, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what happened. And I'm not sure if the size was exactly the same either, but regardless, I don't think that they were super thrilled with the end product. So they decided to give it another try. So yeah, I, I remember seeing the, the version one when it came out and um, I think it sold out. I think the version one sold out. Um, otherwise, I'm pretty sure I would have snagged it. Or 
I think maybe they announced very shortly after they released that kit that they were going to pull it and try again. So I was like, eh, okay, well, I'll just wait for the, you know, the second, the second try. So yeah, I'm not sure. If anybody else knows, please leave in the comments. Um, DK6526 said in regards to that same unboxing of flower delivery said that is gorgeous i'm kind of regretting not getting it after seeing this the colors and special drills are so vibrant yeah it's it's amazing if you get a chance to snag it when it when and if it restocks again i'm sure it will it's like it was like the, the most popular kit of 2023 if it restocks um yeah and if you're able to it's it's definitely worth snagging it's going to be a ton of fun to work on um so yeah just getting some more drills down here. Bam, bam, bam. Apollo's getting cozy. Um, yeah, I'm liking these orange colors. They're keeping me interested for sure. There's so much confetti in this kit and, um, and line blocking, just like all of the things that take extra time. This kit is all in for the things that take extra time like you get a little little sections of color blocking here and there but it's pretty darn minimal um it's usually up in the sky which we did earlier that you get the majority of color blocking but down here like in the telescope is just a ton of confetti and it's a lot of like hunting and pecking to find the colors so i almost always miss colors like once i'm done with this i'll be like okay we're moving on and then like 20 minutes later, I'll be like, oh, there's another one right there. Let me get that trip. Let me get that container again. But I try my best to find them all. Like, here's two right here that I didn't see. Boom. And ah. come on, putty. Let me just, where's my little reload sheet? There we go. Boop. Let me just grab a little dot of putty to get in that single placer. There we go. Okay. Um, thank you so much for the comment, D. I appreciate it. Um, Hartana said in regards to my vlog episode 94, oh, the entire moving situation sounds stressful. I hope they start to take moving seriously so you can get moved in when you're supposed to. Yes, they, they, I mean, a lot of that was my own personal, like, worry. Um, but yeah, it, they, the tenants that are currently there were able to kind of get, you know, get a move on, uh, literally. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so I think they're all moved out now. I mean, my move in day is at the time of filming this, it's tomorrow. So they better be. Um, so I think I'm good to go. I'm going to start taking stuff over there after work today. Um, some more stuff over there. And, um, I've only been going into the little side garage where I have like a storage shelf that's been cleared out for me. And that was nice and clear. So if that's any indication of how the rest of the house looks, I haven't gone inside yet. Um, hopefully we're good to go. So, um, and then Hartana said in regards to my vlog episode 95, well, I commented on the last video, hoping everything would go smoothly for the move, but it seems like it's all working out. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. Alicia, uh, T61 said in regards to the unboxing of flower delivery. Um, thanks for another great unboxing, Anthony. This one is on my rather long and getting longer wish list. Yeah, it's it's on a lot of wish lists from what I'm seeing. And um, yeah, it's it was a super popular kit. I guess I'm kind of lucky that I was able to get my hands on that. And then what was the other one? Um, there was one from You May Art that released recently, and it was called Rose Library. And I feel like that one was also super popular. And I was kind of surprised that I was able to snag it because I wasn't right there at early release to get it. I was kind of towards the end of the early release period. So I was like, oh, I'm probably going to have to hope that more become available for general release. But I was able to snag it. So that was good. Um, but yeah, thank you for the comment. Uh, Jeffrey Morrison over at Echoes of Color said... Hello, great unboxing, sir. I also like Under the Stairs. That's the same character, right? The colors rock in this canvas for sure. Certainly blinged, a blinged out piece. Yeah, it is. It's the same um, same character from uh, Kiki's Flower Delivery in both of those images. So yeah, thanks for the comment. Uh, Sean Tia Smith, F-U-O-B, F-U-6-O-B, said in regards to my whip and chat from January 14th, um, 
you too, love you, love you. <laughs> just some just some nice kind words. Thank you so much for the comment. Michelle Callender said in regards to the unboxing of flower delivery, I hesitated on this one again. Now I have to wait for it to restock. It it's I I could almost guarantee it's gonna come back. So just be patient. You'll get it soon. You'll get it soon. Um, Diane Hinkley said in regards to my uh, entire diamond painting stash video 3.0. Love all of your stash. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Um, Tracy Cruz 5793 in regards to the unboxing of flower delivery said, Hi, Anthony. I do have her in my stash, but I'll be starting under the stairs first. I love Kiki. Yeah, I, I'm really liking it too. I still have yet to finish the movie, but I will someday. <laughs> I got about halfway through and I think I just need to start over from the beginning. Um, I did watch all of uh, Princess Mononoke, which was really good because um, my roommate was more interested in that. Um, so we did watch that, and there's a kit from Jaded Gem Shop that I think I'm going to get that is um, themed um, like Princess Mononoke. So I think it's more fan art. So yeah. Um, okay, it looks like we're done with this color as well. Let me double check, make sure my eyes aren't tricking me. Yes, 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 yes. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, cool. So we're going to move on to DMC uh, 3371. So we'll do that. Um, Michelle Callender said, in regards to my finish and review of Borealis, simply beautiful. Thank you so much. That was an awesome kit to work on. Um, Billy NSWPDX said, wow, in regards to that same video. Thank you. Lisa Noob said, stunning. Love the colors in this one. Yeah, the colors were amazing. Um, LM. Kubage said, cute and cool. Thank you. And Bella Luna said, definitely an interesting depiction of the Northern Lights for sure. Very 70s. Haha, <laughs> great job. Thank you so much. Yes, it is. I mean, I think that image was made in the 30s, maybe. Yeah, in the 30s. So it does have 70s, 70s vibes for sure, but it's also giving me kind of like art deco, kind of art nouveau um, kind of vibes too. Um, but those colors definitely give it that seventies feel. So yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Uh, Becky L 306 said, bravo. It's a nice one. Single and placing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And Jennifer Murray said, beautiful. And you are extra beautiful for being honest, even if it's not all positive for your friend. You, sir, are a true friend and an honest man. Oh, thank you. They just don't make them like you anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh. Great job and great video. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. Yeah, I I mean, Jade Jade takes constructive feedback very, very well. And, you know, I, I want to provide that the, the honest feedback, you know, to make sure that I'm you know, not brushing anything under the rug. And if there's opportunities for improvement, then um, I, I want to share those with her so she continues to be successful. And nothing that I experienced working on that kit was like a detriment to working on it. I was being very picky. But like I said in that video, because I am a channel that doesn't do the like doesn't do budget diamond paintings, or I'm not I haven't found any that I'm particularly interested in working on. Um, and the price point of a lot of the products that I use is higher than you might see if you look at every single place you could get a diamond painting, then I think it's important to have a little bit more of a critical eye because the investment involved. So, yeah. Um, Miller Time Mama said, yes, do the podcast. Yes, I, I will work on it. Uh, Lori Joseph 8478 said, so beautiful, stu stunning, love her eye area in regards to my finish of Borealis. Yes, it's beautiful. Thank you. Hartana said, beautiful finish. Thanks for being so honest in all of your, your reviews. I just got my Black Friday order from her and I'm excited to work on them. Oh, awesome. You'll have to tell me what you got. Um, Mia's Life with KFS said in regards to my vlog episode 93, honey, you're not old enough for a midlife crisis and just go out there and try all the roller coasters you feel like trying. I hope I can join your paint along if I'm done with a painting to join. Did you ask your vet about that dog illness? Oh God, that entire drama about scented glue dots was ridiculous and low. I keep to the people I know and have dear here on YouTube and Mary is awesome. Now I can't wait to see that parody video get to it soon, please. I love summer, but remember, we don't get those crazy high temps here in Denmark, but the warm weather 
does wonders for my pain levels and I love the nature and flowers over the summer. My second favorite is the season of September since it's my birthday month and mostly the weather is still nice. Have a great day and give Apollo a nose boot from me. Yes, I will. And thank you so much for the comment. Um, yeah, I, um, I hope you can join the paint along as well. I actually sat down with my roommate last night while we were watching TV and hanging out. And um, I was like, okay, I need to come with, up with eight different subjects from this kit, A Question of Reality. So I pulled the kit out, I let him look at it, I gave him the little thumbnail, you know, sticker sheet. And I was like, let's pick eight. And there was already a couple that I had already selected and started researching. Um, but he helped me come up with a few other things that he saw in that canvas. He's like, isn't this a, you know, X, Y, Z? And I'm like, oh, good catch. And he's like, doesn't, do you feel that this is giving you like wanting to explore um, evolution and stuff? And I was like, oh, interesting. So he was like seeing some stuff that I didn't catch. So I wrote all of my notes down for it. And so that gives me some good research points. I need to narrow it down to my top eight and then we'll go from there. But we're making making moves towards getting that getting a structure around it, and then I'll probably announce the paint along in February. So those that don't have the kit and wanna use the kit as part of it can, or at least know when the paint along will start. So yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Um, Alicia T61 said in regards to my finish and review of Borealis, so glad you're doing uh, so glad you're getting pickier. I appreciate the honesty. Just nice to know what to expect in the majority of the time I will overlook things like quality of trash drills and such, especially if I really like the artwork. I am working on my first Jaded Gem Shop kit and, abs and am absolutely loving it. It is a square kit and although there is some trash, the drills are extra excellent. Yay, good. I'm glad you like it. Um, Mia's Life with KFS said in regards to my vlog episode 94, hopefully you didn't get sick after that walk. Casa Bonita looks amazing. Hopefully the food was great. I didn't get sick. I'm fine. It wasn't that cold. <laughs> At least to me, it's not that cold. I guess that's all, you know, relative to how you feel about cold. But I'm like, it was cold, but I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't like shivering or anything that like that. I was just slightly underdressed, but we were fine. We were fine. Um, yeah, I... I won't be going out in shorts and a t-shirt in 20 degree weather by any means. I just had a lighter jacket that I thought I would need, but I was fine. Um, Alicia T61, oh, whoops, 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 going the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Debbie Richardson uh, Casol, uh, Richardson Casol 6714 said in regards to my finish of Borealis, so beautiful, thanks for sharing. Of course, thanks for watching. The Diamond Stitcher said, looks great. You are you are right. This rendering style looks great from a distance. I have a lot of artwork at this shop, but I hope one day they will have professional rendering just to clean up areas like you mentioned. I think they do. I mean, I, I would consider if Jade does the hand rendering herself, I would consider that professional. And then a lot of times uh, diamond painting shops will just their manufacturer has a hand charter that does it. Um, on their end, so that's a different form of professional rendering. Um, I think from I think with that particular image, it's it's hard. It, I could imagine it being really difficult to hand chart that because you want to. Her style of rendering is more confetti heavy. There's more color transitions and color blendings. There's not those hard lines, so it's harder to try to do hand charting when you're trying to maintain all of that. Um, when it's a little bit more chunky or blocky, um, I could imagine it being a little bit easy to figure out what's gonna happen on that one, but I've done you know a few kits now from Jaded Gem Shop and um, haven't ever seen that issue. So I think it's it can also be very artwork dependent. Um, I've seen plenty of, you know, um, Planning, plenty of renderings from various shops where I'm like, this could have been this, or this could have been slightly this way. So it's just, it's all just, I think, dependent on the artwork and the, what the shop owners or what the shop's style of rendering is or where they, they really shine. And I think Jade really shines in those color blending and kind of high confetti kits like Borealis. Um, but there was also, I was looking at the original image in those pink areas were a little bit blocky on the original artwork too. So I, I think it was just a number of different things, but, but yeah, I mean, things will always improve. Things can get better. And, um, 
yeah, just always make sure if you if you do create content to share your honest opinions on how things work up. And if you aren't a content creator, still, I think it's worth sharing with shop owners directly, either via social media or an email, letting them know what your experience was. And that way they have the opportunity to adjust. So Apollo hair, come on, buddy. Oh no, oh no, it's really in there. There we go, got it, got it. Part of it's stuck underneath a drill. This happens so often. Oh my gosh. A lot of times I'll just say forget it. I just leave it. I might just leave it. Oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for the comment. Um, Cynthia Gant, in regards to that finish and review of Borealis, just left some nice emojis. Thank you. Um uh, regards in regards to my vlog episode 95 Mia said oh a podcast I'm so in for that okay I'm still dizzy here and it is bedtime in a second it'll be like going to bed after a wild night out yeah Apollo was pulling me in circles and I was like don't watch don't watch you're gonna get dizzy <laughs> Um, in regards to my vlog episode 90 um, Ginger Tate said this is a very thoughtful conversation I think that people I think people forget that artists have been using other images forever. For example, Andy Warhol in his famous Campbell soup cans, he used the original image and screen printed over it to alter how we see the soup can. AI generated images can really be a great tool. Have we considered that it can be used as a creative outlet for those that may have a disability where they can't really use traditional art forms? Exactly. Yeah, there's so many use cases for um, AI tools in the process for a variety of different people. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much. Diamond Grandma 1048 said in regards to my unboxing of flower delivery, just a bunch of heart emojis. Thank you. And then TX Laura in regards to that same video said, I love that painting, though I'm not at all familiar with the movie on which it is based. I just love the details. Yeah, I I wasn't familiar with the movie either until Flower Delivery came out and I was told that it's from Kiki's Flower Delivery. And that's what got me interested in studio ghibli and wanting to watch those movies was just because of this artwork that's being released by yume art so yeah i had zero familiarity with it either i knew some of the characters like some of the characters look familiar because i've seen like plush dolls of some of the characters and stuff and i've seen other people work on diamond paintings that i didn't know were from a movie um there's one called spirited away that is really really popular and I've seen a lot of diamond paintings of that but I had no idea what it was in reference to so yeah I kind of started out the same way or I am in that same place of like I just like the artwork I don't know what it's in reference to but I want to kind of know a little bit more um, and kind of get the reference so that's why I'm starting to watch some of these movies but yeah and that is the last comment. We got caught up and I still have just enough time to go refill my water and heat up some leftovers before I have to get back to it. So um, yeah, thank you all so much for your um, your comments. I have literally six minutes to go eat. Um, thank you all so much for your comments. I really appreciate it. This is going to be a long video. We had a lot to catch up on. I'll try to do these more frequently, but um, I'll be moving as of tomorrow, and so I will be pretty much offline for the next few days getting everything moved and organized. Um, at the time of filming this, I do have some videos already um, on the books ready to go, so you'll still be seeing content from me. Um, and then as soon as I'm able to get settled and kick things back off, um, I will start filming some uh, new content from the new house, um, probably on some new trails, take you around Golden. I'm so excited. I feel like this is going to be the start of a kind of the next chapter in um, in the single and placing YouTube content because it's it's a new location. I'm so I I could go on and on about how thrilled I am, but I'll leave it at that. I can't wait to see you for the next video. Um, don't forget to comment, share your thoughts. Anything you got, I'd love to hear it. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content with friends, family members, anyone that you think might take some value out of it. Otherwise, happy placing, and we'll see you next time. Bye, 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 bye. Yay.